This program was recorded on Monday, December the 17th, in the year of our Lord, 2012. The opinions expressed by the participants in the following program do not necessarily represent that of this station or its management. From the John DeVita Recording Studio, located in an undisclosed and clandestine location on the great northwest side of our fair city of Chicago, we once again are pleased to be presenting yet another edition of our monthly roundtable panel discussion show, Meet the Chicago Historians. Today we have submitted for your approval our last program of the year. Being the month of December, this is our special Christmas holiday show. Now here's the guy who started it all, John DeVita. Thank you, Rich. From the John DeVita Broadcast Center, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Meet the Chicago Historians on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday. December the 17th, the year 2012 or 2012. Today's panel will be talking about old-time Christmas in Chicagoland, and they will also talk about a review of the events from the year 2012. So sit back and enjoy Meet the Chicago Historians. And now, to start today's program, here is our announcer, Richard Lang. Good afternoon, people. Now, here's our panel moderator, Jack Red Ryan. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. We, uh, as we said, this is our uh, ultimate, our last one of the year, obviously, and uh, um, we try to have a, we try to have a little bit of a uh, good time. And well, levity, is, of course, today is kind of tempered by the events of last week in uh, Midtown, Connecticut, and we must talk a little bit about that. Address it, of course, our. Our prayers are with everyone there, and uh, they keep calling it, referring to it as a, a, a tragedy. Well, I think it's an atrocity, which means it's designed by some human, regardless of what his state of mind was. It was could it could have been totally avoided somehow. But uh, anybody got any thoughts on that? Uh, Bill Kugelman, my left. Yeah, Jack, uh, you're right. It was an atrocity, and uh, a lot of people are uh, likening this to what happened here 54 years ago at Our Lady of the Angels. Uh, uh, you know, the loss of life there was, uh, was much more, but uh, uh, th- this, this is just uncalled for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, every politician now uh, and do-gooder is coming out with that uh, we should stop guns and we should uh, gun control and, and this and that. And, and uh, no, this was a sick individual. In fact, it looks like maybe part of the, the family, uh, uh, you know, uh, was just involved in this, too, that uh, they should have known. They should have known that this kid had trouble and the, and, and the, was a troubled person. And the, uh, uh, the authorities, I don't know what they do in Connecticut, but uh, the authorities should have uh, stepped in and uh, possibly helped this guy. So uh, my feelings are, are just that uh, uh, it was a troubled, very troubled individual that should have been uh, helped. Yes, sir. Well, the problem with that is you're right. However, identify it, yourself, sir. Oh, my okay. name's Al Opitz. I'm president of the Austin Army Community Council. However, the problem with trying to identify people that are mentally ill is not so simple. And the mm-hmm. other problem is gun control sounds great until you find out that there's 200 million guns in the United States and how are you going to get rid of them plus the fact that this morning they said uh, 99% of them owned by 60% of the people so consequently there are multiple gun collectors out there but the, the problem again is that you could stop manufacturing guns and everything else but they do have a underground railroad as such coming from some place or other with guns coming up north here 
for the gangs as such. And the problem is, how do you stop the gangs from getting guns? And that's a good question that the politicians can't answer. I, I agree with you, uh, Rich, and, and I, I also think that that old adage of guns don't kill people, people kill people. Uh, uh, I'm a gun, uh, not a gun collector, a gun nut, but I do. My, I was raised hunting and fishing and, and uh, on the farm, and, and uh, uh, I believe that, that uh, uh, maybe we ought to go to the schools and, and educate these kids. We uh, teach them how to fix cars in schools. Uh, why not teach them gun safety? Uh, a gun is a, is a vicious weapon. So let's, uh, let's, let's look at it in a, in a very simple, realistic way. Yes, and, and what, you, what you said, Bill, is, uh, <clears throat> does have some uh, controversy and, and some yes and no's. But uh, uh, season's greetings. I'm Jeanette Frontier, originally through uh, WJJG, and uh, we'll all try today to contribute some better uh, subjects and of course we can't let this one go uh, uh, that was that statement was right it's people behind the gun uh, that we have to watch out the gun is no good it's like money money is no good unless you have a reason for it or a use for it um, mental illness is uh, a kind of a, a subject I know not a lot about but uh, I have dealt with it in my career and so on but uh, what I want to say is that is a uh, title that gets uh, put on just about any way of talking about depression or uh, your uselessness or that uh, it's a mental illness it's a, you know but there are so many depths to mental illness and uh, the point being brought up that this should have been caught some time ago this this in this case it's a uh, a boy or a man who did it uh it can be girl or woman too you know that uh the thing is there no one could tell you truthfully even though they say they know very little about him that one day he didn't pull a stunt or show some outward sign or why mom protected him so he they had an agenda about him they just don't know which one to talk about because they think it's so common, and it isn't. Some of their actions are not common actions. Uh, the other side of it is, uh, in their home, they had guns. Uh, the mother, w that was her hobby. That was her hobby. She had a right to her hobby, you know, and I'm sure she kept them somewhere where uh, they were guarded. We don't know how many days it took him to prepare for this or months or he didn't do it in one minute you know but um, talking about a respect for guns uh, I come from a small town up north in Minnesota if you went to any home there and did not find a gun we would have a problem and so it is how you respect it and uh, and and that's my little bit of contribution to what you said bill it 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 makes sense we are the one who use the gun exactly and that's what we have to watch oh, exactly also possibly just one moment um a psychiatrist was talking early this morning and i thought he brought up an excellent point we have to start keeping these vicious games away from our children it fills their minds with things they never thought about. And when they follow the pattern of these people, they seem to be copying some of these games. And, uh, and, and this is another subject. You know, maybe it isn't the gun. Maybe uh, it's... There's a new movie out now uh, called J The Django Chained or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's supposed to be, you know, very well uh, uh, received in that. And they say it is one of the most vicious and bloody uh, movies that uh, right. that we've seen this Tarantino and I I don't know these people but they say that every movie that he's made or directed or whatever he does uh has been a a uh, very 
bloody type situation. Yeah. And that's what the kids are saying. Like I say, it's supposed to be one of the big hits of the season. So you uh, are. we'll see what happens with that. Well, the so, other thing with the with her guns is she, what the uh, types of bullets she had are meant strictly for killing people. They're, I think they were armor piercing, or they were at least uh, more powerful and needed for hunting anyway, unless you're going for uh, elephants. I haven't seen any elephants lately around here. Yeah. But the only, th you know, it, it, some of the stuff is ridiculous why people even want them, except that they can get them. And armor piercing is, is uh, detrimental, and the cops are trying to stop it, but they can't get anywhere with that. And the other thing is why do they need a magazine with 30 rounds? where six rounds is more than sufficient for the majority of people. Rich? Rich Lang? Hi, I'm your announcer, Rich Lang. I'm a student uh, at Ken Little's Wright College history class, and I want to say a few words of concern about our regular panelist, Ken Little. He is ill now, and our thoughts and prayers go out to him. He has been a, a great historian and a comrade for many years, and we all wish him well. Oh, yeah. That goes for all of us uh, here, here. Uh, Rich. Yes. Uh, the other, the other thing God we, bless you, Ken. The Mike other Mike. thing we lost this week was a, a guy named Ralph Fries. Exactly. Good point. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people may not know him, but they, he was called Mr. Canoe. He did a lot for uh, conservation. He uh, did a lot to help clean up the Chicago River, Splains River, and other areas. And uh, he was a fourth generation blacksmith. Of course, that ends now, and his shop is being closed or being yes, sold sir. out and stuff like that. So, I can speak uh, my own self. Uh, Tom, also, we uh, firsthand when we were in Scouts and Explorers, other guys 14 and up, we took a, it was the summer of 1962, so I was we were 15 years old with our leader, and we down the, down the Illinois River, and we uh, that's where we rented them. And uh, to believe that such a place is here in the city of Chicago, I mean, uh, it's the Chicago Land Canoe Base, isn't the name? Yeah. Yeah. And I was gonna, I was gonna mention that too. Very good. I'm glad you brought it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very unique situation. I know you wouldn't even think you had such a place here, but you do. This is the sort of thing that they would go in wild Chicago or somewhere and, and show you that it was actually right here in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're being joined by uh, Tom McKenna right now. We're just talking about Chicago Land Canoe Base. Remember that canoe trip we had in summer of '62, Tom? Oh, where do you want to sit? Tom's just uh, getting himself settled here. Oh boy. Anyway. As usually, gets to sit next to the girl. <laughs> but, but be, be, you know, yeah. people understand that bla what a blacksmith is. They, yeah. they do ornamental iron. Uh, they can make all kinds of things. They're mm -hmm. basically equivalent to a mechanical engineer with, yeah. or a metallurgical engineer mm -hmm. as far as knowledge of uh, work with steel and iron, stuff like that. Uh, years ago, they, they used to make swords and other things, you know, so... It we still Shoot have the them horses. at the racetrack. <laughs> yeah. We still have Shoot them the at the racetrack. Those yeah. are farriers. They're called they're farriers, but they are blacksmiths. Right. That's right. And we miss them a lot on the fire department because we had, uh, I, I would say, I wish Ken was here, we had about four or five of them that worked, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making our tools and, and mm -hmm. designing our tools, and, and they're missed. They well, very the, other, the other craft was... I was over in England, uh, was, uh, went aboard the uh, HMS Vic, uh, Victory, and they had a blacksmith there. He was uh, basically had to take care of a lot of stuff because it was a warship. So when they got damaged in a battle, yeah. you know, they had to repair the ship at sea. You know, they, <laughs> they didn't have the luxury of another ship come up and helping them out all the time. I think we just call them handymen now. Uh, now. <laughs> right. but We're not too many of those guys around here. No, <laughs> no, no. Right now, I, th I think one of the problems, you know, go my usual ti diatribe about teaching kids. There's, you know, everybody thinks you need a college education. You don't. There's a lot of work out there that, like carpenters, uh, especially finished carpenters, stuff like that. They do beautiful work. Uh, furniture builders. Even though most of the stuff comes in from who knows where, the craftsmanship required and all this stuff is, uh, uh, you know, really something else. Uh, these are more artisans than, uh, but then they still need people to build houses. Although I don't, I always consider them dead end jobs because once the job's completed, you got to find another job. But uh, one of these days they'll be uh, making those uh, homes in. Uh, 
China or Japan and shipping them. They'll find some way to ship oh, them over. Sears used to do it. Like everything else. Oh. Sears used to be able to buy Sears uh, houses. They, they oh, yeah. ship you. I don't think that they were shipped from China, though. No, no, no. no. But they would ship you everything, including the nails, mm -hmm. the paint, right. everything yeah. else. And you go out there and beat the wood to get that thing get up there. There are a lot of houses and out there. And they're still yeah. standing. My, my in-laws had a house. Yeah. Sears house, yeah. Oh yes, pretty nice place. Yeah. Oh yes. We were yeah. just before you joined us, Tom. Tom McKenna just joined us, and uh, uh, we were speaking first about the uh, the incidents last last week that murders murders at Midtown, Connecticut. And uh, do you have any thoughts on it, or well, other other than to say that it's a, a tremendous tragedy, and you know our our hearts and prayers go out to all the people mm -hmm. that are involved in that, uh, but. Uh, Having having said that, it's uh, the politicians have now jumped on board, mm -hmm. and every time politicians jump on board of anything, it goes uh, very rapidly downhill. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was listening to our president last night, who gave I'm sure what he thought was a very eloquent speech, uh, but it was way too long and uh, way too inappropriate for the uh, situation, in my opinion. But you're right. Uh, they're talking about that uh, shooting they had in Virginia, where the uh, shooter was had mental health problems, and you would think they would increase the mental health appropriations, but they cut it nine percent. So, figure that one out. You know, mental health is a problem. You got fully fifty percent of the people on the street that are look like beggars and all that stuff have mental problems. There's, there's uh, other things too. Some of them are, are down on luck, but there's also so-called lifestyle, which is hard to comprehend for most people, but this is the way they live. I, I ran to, years ago, I ran to one guy, he offered one of the guys a job, and he says he wants $60 a day cash. <laughs> That's all he was concerned about. I apparently yeah. made $60 a day by getting on the street. Well, that's what I mentioned a moment ago, that uh, that word mental illness is so loosely used. Uh, it's a serious subject, such that's a right. serious subject. Uh, but again, we don't, like now we're closing some fac facilities. Well, where are you putting these people? Possibly right out on the street among us. Mm -hmm. And that might be more the answer that is than what? taking care oh, of them. Oh, exactly. That's where they are going. And, yeah. yeah. I, th so. I think I think one of the one of the problems is is that to focus on the gun issue and an issue that is is so much more completely complex, uh, it, it's it's it it simplifies it simplifies it for the politicians to just focus on guns. Mm -hmm. I mean, and obviously the people that are that are doing uh, these things, they they they're men mentally ill. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a gun is an inanimate object to blame a situation like that on an inanimate object would be the same way uh, when I was a, a, an investigator in major accident investigation in Chicago when we had a rash of uh, fatal hit and runs it would be the equivalent of me saying to the media well it's those cars you know once we can eliminate the cars uh, it's not the cars, it's the people that are driving the cars. Yes. To blame to blame obesity on knives, forks, and spoons, I mean, they're mm -hmm. inanimate objects. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, but, it's, but it's a very easy way to simplify a very complex problem, mm -hmm. a problem, and that's what politicians are great at doing. It's, it's all the gang-involved shootings in the city of Chicago. They don't blame the people that are pulling the trigger, they blame the guns. It right. simplifies. It makes it easy for them. As we oh, all yeah. know that all the gang members, they all got their guns legally, through legal means, right? Yeah, that's right. why, yeah. That's why yeah. I had a laugh when the state legislature yeah. enacted uh, uh, a new law that if you committed a crime with a weapon that wasn't, uh, uh, you did, and the, the person didn't have an FOID card, uh, mm -hmm. that that would become a felony. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm imagining... I imagine all the Latin kings sitting around going, hey, man, we better go get that FOID yeah. card. And that's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah they, they yeah, firearm owner's identification. Yeah. 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 Well, there yeah. was a report this morning that, that this kid, uh, what's it, Lanza, uh, tried to get a, uh, a firearm. He, tried, he went into a gun store, tried to buy a gun, and they refused him. 
Right. So yeah. okay. he got the guns that his mother had. Right. Now, the law worked there. It right. worked. Mm -hmm. There was something wrong. Mm -hmm. If that's true, a lot of that stuff coming out you, that we've heard know yet, from yeah. that you, day you know, you know, is, is very is false. You but know, right. another, another point along those lines. Again, talking about our, our news media and the the uh, amount of validity the average person puts on a story a story that is put over the uh, radio or television or even in print uh, as fact. Every, uh, that that incident. Every single thing in the early reports, every wow. single report was wrong. Right. Every single thing was wrong. Yeah. From who the shooter was, how many people were, were injured, mm -hmm. wh what, what was done, where his mother w was shot. Every single thing that the media reported was false. So it does prove, Tom, that it's all about ratings, isn't it? It's right. not rating. even... Yeah. i got to be uh, there first. And, and and first. Ratings. Be first. Yeah. Right. And, right. Right. And, yeah. and lack of compassion and... Uh, I saw a, a young reporter, <clears throat> maybe she's got a lot to learn, walk right up to one of the parents who I could tell by their actions had to be much involved with the story and said, and how do you feel? I wanted to jump through that screen myself. Yeah, that, w that was disgraceful. Oh. And, and after the sheriff specifically said when he addressed the, the media at the family's request, Please, and I, and I believe he used, used the word, I implore you, please leave the families alone. And did they listen? No. Yeah. Oh, they, if you ever no. Go this has always been the same way uh, uh, with reporting and, and with the media. It's uh, uh, before 1980, a couple of, of my compadres and I went to a, a class at the University of Michigan, and they had, uh, it was on the media, how to handle the media. How to handle reporters, and all of that was brought up, and uh, and they know it, they know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's who's who's to get the story the first, who's to get the hottest story, and Worth guess what? My contract is coming up pretty soon. I uh, you know yeah. I need to get, and it's the same way with the politicians. Mm -hmm. yeah. They mm -hmm. use that gun control, and it, it, mm -hmm. you know it's just a a, a heart wrenching thing that they're bringing up. Well, okay. you know. Uh, to to use this term of breaking the rules too, and again, we all have made one point that the gun is only a gun. It's the person using it that we have to watch out for. But we have a tendency to break rules no matter what the subject is. And again, we could talk about another tragedy: the fellow who climbed the ladder to the chimney on the top of one of our highest buildings to get the best picture in Chicago. Uh, you know what? what is this He's about? out of the gene pool. Yeah. Yes. That's just the way I feel about yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, it's... The way I, I look at it, it says... Where do we draw the line? Yeah. Nobody listens. The way I looked at it, a little dark joke about that. I said he went up there to go and be a smoked ham because he was a comedian. Yeah. yeah. Well, well that, it's true. I mean, well, that, that's we, that's what they say about people that I, you know, like uh, uh, was just said, low on the gene pool. Their fam famous last words is, "Hey, watch this." Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You here like I those, go. Those Darwin yeah. Awards they have on the internet all the time. No. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's it is awful <laughs> way to uh, compare something, but it seems like it's. Uh, you know, the tragedy comes out of breaking the rules. and, well, and uh, I, I always consider it uh, accidental suicide. Here you go. Hmm. John was You know, it's really ironic what happened that night. Wednesday evening, I'm sitting upstairs in my, in my, my bedroom. I'm watching Chicago Fire. That comes on uh, Channel 5. At, mm -hmm. uh, it's NBC, folks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> at, at 9 o'clock in the evening. And t t the story they, they had this, this uh, past Wednesday... They showed, uh, well, the call they got was uh, uh, there were people trapped in an elevator in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a high rise building. So the fire department squad three <laughs> responded and uh, they, they're checking all the floors and, and finding out, well, they found out where, the, where this elevator car was stuck. So they put a harness on this fireman and with the ropes, they lowered them down the shaft from a couple floors above. 
And the fireman, you know, is uh, in there opening up the elevator door and asking, is there anybody trapped in here, anybody here? And there was no answer. But he happened to look up, and there was a guy standing in the next shaft over ready to jump. And uh, this fireman talked him out of it and got him to come over onto the shaft where he was at. They put the harness on him and raised this guy, this, this uh, uh, suicide guy, up to the floor, and then they, they lowered the, the harness back down to get the fireman back up. The next morning, I get up, and I'm listening to, uh, to the news on WBBM, and they talked about this guy that fell down the shaft. And I said, Hi, uh, how ironic. First, they have it on television showing what, what happened, and then at 1.30 in the morning, it was actually happened that they had to lower people down there, and then they finally had to cut the, 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 the wall open or cut the shaft open to get this guy out, which then later on died. But it was, uh, mm-hmm. it was really ironic to, uh, to know, what, uh, you know the, what had happened that day. Just another case of uh, art imitating law. life imitating art. Well, it, that's surprising is the fact that was, the shaft is 42 feet stories high and how you got stuck is a question because those shafts are you know if you got down I don't know how many floors three wasn't it something like that I don't know but no, that would be more than that yeah. it's uh, it's a shame he had his uh, his uh, cell phone with him that's all <laughs> because yeah. uh, you know well his girlfriend w- actually called when mm. they well he had to call mm. his girlfriend oh okay. yeah <laughs> And well, it is. Uh, a, you know, we were making. Uh, it is a shame, and certainly a big hurt to the people who knew him personally. Uh, sure, it is. So, sure, it is. But that goes. But, as you like said, I say, it's a good thing he's out of the gene pool. Let's think about you know, these some things before we. Yeah, uh, but but you know what? You're, I did hear somebody say, uh, uh, "Well, they should have had some protection around there." Okay, all right. Just think of this. Protection. You know where it was. I mean, you know the height of it. Wouldn't it be almost logical to say, the least. <laughs> We have what we need to get up there if we have to fix it. But do we have to put fences because somebody might come up here? Well, I mean, this is this is getting well, or out of wire hand, or isn't it? I can imagine that the lawyers oh. are just drooling yeah. over oh. getting a hold of this. Case. Well, you know, it, it's, oh, incidents yeah. like that, that, that's another classic example of if you walked up to that guy and told him five minutes before he did that, you know Don't what? What you're doing, I think, is not a really good idea. He would have, wouldn't have paid the no. slightest bit of attention no. No. to you. No. No. But no. The, the other thing was, I, I, I was talking to uh, police police department one time, and I said they were talking about graffiti. And I said I was marveling at how some of these so-called artists are way up in the sky there doing their dirty work. And he said, "Yeah, I know. We pick them up periodically. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. you take the long, the fast way down, yeah. mm. and uh, you don't hear about those." That's right. You know, but there's there's a few mm-hmm. of them that get. That's what I said. How much do we have to protect? I mean, <laughs> what is, what is our uh, limit to you know, what they have to worry about? Getting back to uh, uh, the Connecticut uh, uh, tragedy. Uh, today, I think they they said they were burying two two of right. the kids, so, yeah. and uh, we got Christmas coming up, yeah. and and that's They'll what we started this show about is uh, mm-hmm. is Christmas in Chicago and and mm-hmm. so forth and that. Mm-hmm. Not that I want to change the subject, but uh, can you imagine what the Christmases are going to be like mm-hmm. there and sure. uh, in well, Connecticut? Well, one thing we were talking about before about uh, so-called gun control, I I, I find it's, it struck me one time we were. Um, we were down to see my cousin, my daughter, myself. We're see, uh, uh, what's his name? Ken, Ken, what's, his, what's, the, what's the guy's name who does the, Ken Burns, the films on PBS? Films, right. right. Ken and Burns. Prohibition yeah. was coming out that we were going to have so go. And uh, it struck me, Prohibition and gun control are so much alike. They're both very, very, they have such high, high-sounding, uh, uh, lofty uh, purposes. And yet it, it turns out to be uh, completely, completely the opposite. It doesn't... Uh, it, it it doesn't deliver at all. As a matter of fact, the opposite happens. Exactly. Prohibition was fostered organized crime mm-hmm. and gun control. Well, you know, as we said before, only only legal uh, only uh, law abiding people follow laws, and it looks like it's almost time for one of those. No, it's not. Go ahead. You go. Now for a brief intermission. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians.
Well, friends, now that the, the winter season is here, it's time to make sure your home is ready for the winter season. It won't be long before the snow and ice will be here, and now is the time to check the roof on your home. Make sure your roof is in good shape. If you have a bad roof, your attic or crawl space will get mildew and could cause drip, drip, drip on the ceiling in your rooms, which could cause damage to the ceiling. So sooner or later, you're going to have to get the roof repaired or replaced. So don't have double expense. Call Best Brothers Roofing at 630-616-1359. And Mike Best will drive over in his shiny red truck with the ladders on top and Best Brothers Roofing signs on the doors. Mike will look at your roof, give you an estimate, and go from there. So once again, friends, don't have drip 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 on your ceilings or have double expense call best brothers roofing at area code 630-616-1359 for a free estimate on your roof best brothers roofing area code 630-616-1359 call today for a free estimate Now back to our special holiday edition of Meet the Chicago Historians program. Jack? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll do a little more time on this uh, gun business if you want. In the, in the recent, uh, I was going to say there are um, uh, a lot of arguments can be made. Like remember my dad years ago he used to have a toy gun or something, a red rifle. My my dad says, and Tom, Tom knew my dad real well. We, I know his father from the neighborhood. We, um, he said, you never point a gun at anyone unless you intend to kill him. Now, when you're maybe an eight or ten year old, you go, "What do you mean by that, Dad?" Well, all of a sudden, it does. It strikes you. It's it's the way to. It's just the way to go, and uh, it's very it's very it's very simple a uh, very simple rule, but there's a lot of truth in it. And another thing, we before before you got in, Tom, we were we we're talking about maybe there should be some education of young people with firearms or whatever. Well, you and I, we took riflery. Back in 1961, 62, at the boys club. Yeah, I know. I I, I tell people I tell people about that in yeah. the uh, <laughs> the way the way things are today. If you would even mention yeah, having a, 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 a firearm in a boys club yeah. in the city of Chicago, I mean there'd be a, right. a, a an uproar you couldn't believe. But we actually, shooting. yeah, we we yeah, we're on a rifle team. Yeah, we shot. 22? Yeah, twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. And yeah. in the gym, they had a, uh, some metal. Back in, in, in the gym at the boys club, but yeah. uh, on twenty uh, fifth and Sacramento. Yeah, right, twenty fifth and Sacramento. Robert E. Wood Boys Club. It's still well, there. Well, the other thing is, you're talking about that. You're talking about <laughs> some of these uh, drill teams and stuff like that. They used to use rifles. Oh yeah. Now they can't use rifles well, anymore. Like ROTC, yeah. all of them. You know, yeah. They don't. Cut. They can't. Not even uh, replica rifles. Not that mm -hmm. I heard. You know, heard. Yeah. No, they they use these old stock wooden stocks. Yeah, that's about it. Oh boy. Well, they, they, they. I think the National Rifle Association has a program, an education program, uh, for young people about to educate them about guns and firearms, just gun safety. I mean, it isn't. It isn't really anything promoting the use of firearms, or, but it it teaches young kids what to do if they see a gun safety right yeah. say just safety and there's schools and that that won't go anywhere near it they would they won't they won't well, allow the you know i've i've told my grandkids that I, I got a place up north that that any gun you see whether it's in my cases or wherever it is is loaded yeah is loaded and be respectful and don't you of it. Dare touch and and yeah. it's yeah yeah go right. out and show them what what happens when it hits a right you know bottle here, here, or a watermelon here's, here's no. the problem with education nowadays and that's my opinion they want to teach what they can do on their ACT test yeah. so they can go to college when i went to school they had home economics and it's grammar school home mechanics is what to cook it this way so they taught the boys and girls how to cook how to sew a few other things. Survival. They had art classes. They had uh, they had uh, other classes that are being cut. They had gymnasium gym classes. They had recess, and all these things that are that being cut. That was my cut. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Music. A lot yeah. of things mm -hmm. that could carry you through yeah. uh, life. Yeah, I mean, yes. they're not mm -hmm. ultimate and 
important, but there's there's side lights to it because you know you got to learn some of the stuff. Good anyway. education to go out into mm -hmm. the exactly. yeah, into the I, I'm world. Not, I'm not a liberal arts major by any stretch, <laughs> but uh, you know. But it comes in a, handy, doesn't it? it? It can understand why some people need it. You That's know, it's right. just like religion. Not everybody needs religion, although everybody thinks you do. Mm -hmm. You but know, the, ironic. Oh, excuse me. But go the ahead. fact is that there are certain rules that were established because of religion, or because of religion, not because of <laughs> because religion did it. Because of the fact that the the tenets of the religious uh, thing came in there. You know, thou shalt not kill, stuff like that, which makes mm -hmm. sense. Well, that goes right back to the Judeo-Christian. Uh, the commandments originally, and 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 really, you hear about person being a con conscientious objector or whatever, and they're out there. We know they are, but the original Hebrew was "Thou shalt not murder," and a murder is what an unjustified killing. Right. So we well, have such a thing of, as a justified killing. John, one of one of my favorite stories: uh, the world was coming to an end. Um, they had a special uh, convening of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And they tried to figure out, I mean, everyone, all countries, they were getting ready to launch uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, armies were massed at one another's borders. The world, it was just going to be Armageddon. So they got the greatest scientists in the world, the politicians, uh, the greatest military people, and they inputted all the information they had into this supercomputer that they had. And after all the information was put in, they asked the computer to give us a solution to the problems. And they were all waiting for the uh, uh, the head of the United Nations. What what's his title? General uh, uh, Secretary General. Secretary yeah, Se General. Secretary General of the United Nations. So the computer finally spit out the results of what how to alleviate this problem. And it printed it out, and they ran up to the uh, the, the head and r handed it uh, to him. And you know what it was? It was a printout of the Ten Commandments. Uh, mm. how, how, how logical, huh? Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say, out to lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the yeah. U.N. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the trouble is... It might be all right, huh? Yeah. The problem but, I mean, it's really, it's... If, you know, if you... It tells a story. The base, base, you know, that's... Well, I, I was mm -hmm. looking back at the Second World War, or uh, shortly thereafter, when you talked about the... You had the Army, Air Force, uh, Navy, and every one of the generals in there always thought bigger was better. So everybody wanted the biggest ships in the Navy. Everybody wanted the biggest airplanes in the Air Force. And, of course, had to have the biggest tanks or whatever have you. You know, not necessarily made it efficient, but you had to show the might and the power of your uh, beefdom. So this was a, you know, it hasn't changed any. But the, the, again, well, the plus they got them. I don't, I don't mind them having them as if they use them. Plus they know how to use them. The, 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 the they had a flyover at Soldier Field. Uh, the not this last bear game, but the game before that of the B two bomber. I mean, that's really an impressive sight. I think we've got sixteen of those. We, they, I hear all the, you know, every day in the news about the problem with Iran. If I was president of the United States, I'd mm -hmm. say, hey, Ghost let's fire, fire, let's fire those babies up. Mm -hmm. Is that the stealth bomber? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like the yeah. yeah the plane, okay. Head it out, and then the next day, when someone asked about Iran, I'd say, gee, yeah. I, I, Who? I, I heard, I heard something about Iran, but I, re I really don't re know exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that that's always been my big gripe. With, with all of this world stuff going on is that we, these generals, Army, Navy, Marine, uh, uh, Air Force, and that, we send these people to what they call war college. When they get out and they get some, you know, brass on them or gold on them, uh, they send them to a war college to learn how to protect this nation. And, and <coughs> what happens? They learn less. No. They learn it all, but the politicians shortstop them. Yep. The politicians, guys that don't know diddly about any of this stuff, and and that's where we are right now in this world. Mm -hmm. well, we we are not the we are not the world's champion superpower anymore. No, anymore. Uh -uh. no not not at all. Not in fact, at all. we're very worried right yeah. now about our our uh, yeah. you know. Well, you take a look. Go back to Vietnam. War. 
Now, the generals wanted to do certain things, and they would have probably won the war, except the politicians wanted body counts. <laughs> no. Gun they, control, right? Yeah, they, yeah. Didn't, they didn't want you to bomb certain areas. You know, they had all these restrictions and everything else. And, again, they went out there with this uh, Agent Orange, which did more damage to our troops than it did to the, to, as far as the weed controls or plant mm -hmm. controls. Yeah. Yeah. Like poison, poison gas, whatever it's called. One, yeah. uh -huh. And there's, there's still people out there that are suffering from Agent Orange, and the, and the politicians just recently finally figured out that, hey, that's a casualty of war. It should be treated as such. Before that, they were denying any uh, anything to yeah. these people. And Bring now, back George Patton. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He I'm was sure you all saw he, that, and what he said. He always carried a loaded gun. Exactly. Ready all the time. Well, exactly. I was always consider there's only two real good generals in the, the European theater. One was Patton. The other one was a great ghost, great ghost, uh, desert ghost. Rommel. Rommel. The desert uh, fox. The desert, desert fox. fox. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, plus, you know, the two the, the, the attitude yeah. of the, the of the general public now compared to what it was in World War II. In World War II, General Curtis LeMay uh, ran bombing missions to the mainland of Japan and firebombed at, at, at least 50,000 civilians, and the country applauded. Now, in the Middle East, if a Marine accidentally shoots a civilian, He's they want to put him in jail. Treason, mm -hmm. right. Who was that uh, representative, and was he in Florida? Was he a colonel, light colonel? The guy that comes on the, uh, Fox News? Yeah, news? yeah, yeah I, I can't think of Black guy? Yeah. I can't yeah. think of his name either. Well, yeah, the no. guy that, that right. put the gun down the guy's mouth, or wh whatever it was. He intimidated the guy in that. They fired him. Yeah, well, right. this is, this is uh, I, I've heard other stories worse than that, but uh, I'm not going to relate him at this point. Uh but the fact of the matter is that too many politicians are, you've know, got to remember the generals get their rank by politics. They don't earn it. They have to have their political, anything above colonel has to have an okay by all the members, I think Congress or something like that. Hmm. And consequently, their they're politicians are not really war people as such, other than the fact that they go to war college. <laughs> they, they ought to adopt a, a, so, uh, a fair system like the city has for promotions. Huh? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 like, <laughs> and, like, uh, and like our faith does, too, the, the bishops and cardinals, they're, oh, of course, geez, they all, uh, you know. <laughs> they're all politicians. <laughs> and they're you know what's sad, too, uh, not that you need to have the education or the uh, process of this ladder of, of success, uh, the people, we're, we're saying political, uh, I would think there's a huge gap right now between who is serving in whatever position than the fact of going back to World War II and on through the wars, that they have even had an experience with war. They really don't know what they're oh, talking no. about. No, they don't absolutely know what, not. Right, and then I want to interject. You said your dad told you something. My dad... Mm -hmm. Now that I think back, you know, we always realize how wise our parents are once they're gone. Um, we were, uh, had very little conversation about the uh, atomic bomb when we were, were kids. And it was probably being ma made there at the Fermi, uh, Fermi lab. Um, and we were discussing something, and my dad interjected. He said, you know what? And I think this would be so fitting today. I really wouldn't worry about the atomic bomb, not knowing how much damage it could do. He said, I would worry about the man who was chosen to press the button. Right. And yeah. that sounded so like, what are you talking about? You know, doesn't it fit today? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it certainly does. Out, I have yet to figure out why your religious are so ad adamant about destroying the other religions. You look at the uh, Ayatollahs or whatever they are from the Muslim group, they're zealots. That's the world's wrong, we're right. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. It's not only you know, like the Shiites. You, if you're not a Shiite, you're wrong. You're, you're subject to being yeah. killed unless you convert. And this is the Sunnis are the same way. And you go through, you look at the history of the Catholic Church, that was the same way. 
you know, Martin Luther yeah. was probably the best thing that ever happened to the Catholic Church. Mm. That could be argued. Well, how, well how, how about the, I think there's six countries in the world that being an atheist is a capital offense. I know Saudi Arabia is one of them. Yeah. You can be put to death if you're an atheist, admitted atheist. That's interesting. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia. I realize that mm-hmm. myself. That's an yeah, infallible uh, in Saudi Arabia, subject, could isn't be it? Put to death Everybody's for almost so anything. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your well, well, plus, I, went, <laughs> yeah. I, I still don't think women can drive in Saudi Arabia, can they? I think you're right I about that. I think they're changing that yeah. now because of the fact that uh, I guess women get a little political power there. Hillary go over there and well, I don't know. Form. But the other one I was well, w- women women not not being able to drive in Saudi Arabia. I always point that out to show that they're not all bad. I'm sorry, I apologize. The accident I rate yeah. I couldn't I couldn't pa- I couldn't pass that up. The accident rate is very low there, Tom. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's, it's just, low I've insurance premiums, uh, right? <laughs> I've heard of people have been there, and, and uh, it's a strange country, you know. Because it, it but anyways, be. I was talking to Palestinians that moved out of Palestine because of the uh, conflict with the uh, Jews. No better way of putting it. And they said they went to Saudi Arabia. They were treated worse in Saudi Arabia than they are here in the United States. Mm-hmm. And they're Muslim. I find uh, a mystery of my own uh, questioning. Uh, why do we get so involved with another country when they're having their own problem for hundreds of years? Um, what? Why are we coming along and saving it or protecting it or whatever word we we want to use? You know that's going over the internet right now. Uh, uh, the the uh, the gist of it is that we just got through with this storm and uh, uh, we we've, we've got you know trillions of dollars worth of damage in that. Uh, the only country that has sent any help is Canada. Mm-hmm. But all these countries that we just shovel money into, Supposing not one of them allies, has yeah. even said, sorry. Right. You know. See, that's what I meant. What, where, yeah. what is our, uh, where, where is our duty? What does it, where does it begin and end? I mean, we... Uh, With the politicians. You know. yeah. And again. Yeah. Again. So, oh, exactly. So, uh, well, exactly. Uh, I, I hold what do you that do about, about that? Well, part of the problem is shovel money to some countries is the fact they got a lobbyist. Mm-hmm. Well, they're politicians. Uh, yeah, they're mm-hmm. politicians. They know how to get the money. Up and coming politicians. So again, it's yeah. all about money yeah. or ratings, huh? I mean, yeah. no matter yeah. what power, the subject power. is, there's mm-hmm. a right something. Oh, you're exactly that right. Balances it's power. The power. Money means nothing to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Money, money is. Yeah, four and eight has always been That's a very right low now. percentage where, where of we our budget. We. The amount seems staggering, but the percentage of our budget is very low for foreign aid. Mm -hmm. That's been consistent. Well, Mm -hmm. the same thing with uh, our uh, military is very low. I think it's 4% or 5%. National so budget goes for uh, national defense. Right, right. I, I, yeah. I don't know what it is exactly, but it it it's most people think it's a lot higher than it is. It's not. I mean, I, mean, I know it's way under ten percent. Some people quote the figure. Oh, well, we spent fifty percent of, of our uh, G, GNP on the uh, uh, defense. That's not. That's not no, true. No, no. it's five no. percent. Right. I believe. Right, it's right. it's it's it's, like it's very low. And uh, you know, years ago we spent more more percentage wise than we do now. The height of the Cold War. On the other hand, what's the price of a life? I mean, if you, you 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 know, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's my kid, how can I care if they only put so much money out? Well, the thing is, you know, you're looking at uh, defense. Now, National Guard was one of the mainstays of the uh, state in case they had a disaster or something Mm -hmm. like that. Where's the National Guard in the state of Illinois? Activated? Activated? You find one? No, I'm talking activated in the National Doing, well, they're doing, doing tours uh, in uh, yeah, Afghanistan doing, or something. Hmm. Yeah, but no. they're not they're not performing uh, some of the things they were originally designed for. And that's uh, mm-hmm. a common defense of the local. Yeah. Com- My uh, wife's uh, nephew, uh, he's a captain in the reserve, and uh, and uh, he wound up doing 14 months. He had already done his his uh, regular time, and he wound up doing a 14 month stint in uh, Afghanistan. He was a mm-hmm. uh, captain in charge of an MP group, but you know he's still 14 months away from mm-hmm. from home. Yeah, he didn't. No. He didn't. You know, he didn't. He wasn't rapping about it. But no, here, here I, I remember when I was over uh, the Air Force. Now we went uh, temporary duty for three months at a time to the Azores, mm-hmm. which you know at this peacetime. 
Great little place there little if you don't nice go beach. buggy because it's so boring. <laughs> oh, I was there. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah, people that had the worst time were the married people, mm-hmm. the married guys. Mm-hmm. They they couldn't get you know couldn't stay away. From the family was uh, that important to them to, phys- mentally anyway, if not physically, that they they had a hard time adjusting to living off you know <coughs> away from the uh, home mm-hmm. and such. Single guys, well, since they didn't have any real home life. It wasn't as. Uh, you could have had a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you could have any fun. There was nothing to do there. <laughs> I, I, I a lot of turtles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you go out to plant a tree, you have to dig down more than six inches, you hit solid rock. You know, along, along those lines, of uh, speaking about our military and our veterans, uh, <clears throat> I play with the Shannon Rovers bagpipe band. I'm a drummer. I've been, I used to play with the. Uh, Emerald Society, Chicago Police, and I was one of the founding members of the uh, uh, Chicago Police uh, Pipes and Drums. Uh, we played uh, the joint band, uh, Chicago Police and Chicago Fire Department uh, pipe bands for the two firefighters that were uh, lost their lives in the in the line of duty uh, recently. But anyway, to get to the point, uh, we played the Shannon Rovers played for, and a lot of people don't even know that this occurred, but last Saturday. There was a Chicago Welcomes Home Welcome Homes Its Heroes parade on Columbus downtown. Um, we uh, we participated naturally. They were hoping uh, the organizers the organizers were two uh, grandchildren of World War II veterans, and they had these Welcome Home uh, Hero parades in other cities. I know St. Louis was one of them. So they thought it would be a good idea to have one in Chicago. Now, I realize they were going up against a lot of odds, the, the weather being one, the time of year. It wasn't advertised too well, but nevertheless, it was a very, very pathetic mm, sure. turnout, turnout. It was it was sad. Uh, and it, it kind of couples with the fact that young people, especially today, they, they, no just, don't, they just don't care. Mm-mm. They just flat out don't care you know you can ask a young person what uh, uh, Justin Bieber had for breakfast and they know it to a T you know but ask them uh, anything about it vet- they, they don't even know if World War one was before or after World War two mm-hmm. well, Tom, I don't they, they don't they don't teach that in school yeah. Yeah. No. they don't teach us history, no. history well, let's and geography put, right yeah. let's put it this way they, yeah. they don't didn't teach anything about the Second World War really except for the Holocaust because that's by law otherwise that would have never been taught either but anyways, for the other side, the fact is... What about the helicopter? The Holocaust. Oh, the Holocaust. Oh, the Holocaust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got but those. Put and that not aside, enough said about that either. Yeah. But put that aside, though, if you have a Second World War veteran being buried, you can't find a bugler to play taps. Let mm. me tell you about that. They go, they go out, they play it by... On every, on every, they bring a little machine. No, yeah. they they got a li- they got yeah. a bugle out yeah. there. Yeah, my husband had and a And they've got you know, the the little deal in there because I know I run the I run yeah. a couple of them All and right. uh, we've got a guy that's probably 85 years old, Bobby Gay, and uh, I saw him and uh, here he's got the bugle down <laughs> down by his chest. And it's already playing. Oh, you know? how sad! <laughs> how sad! And it, it and well, it's up. And he does a better job. Of course, Bobby did a good job when he was drinking, though, too. <laughs> you know, he did well, did there's, there's, there's a few people know how to play the bugle, too. That's the, other that's, thing. That's the whole thing. Yeah. They play the well, you know, now. you know, to to carry that over to the the, the uh, police officers and firefighters' funerals that I played at, and I played at, uh, I, I I'd probably say well over a hundred. And that's another thing. I mean, there was for Herbie Johnson's funeral, uh, uh, a firefighter that was killed in the line of duty. His funeral was at uh, St. Rita High School in the chapel there because Herbie was a St. Rita graduate, as John and I both are. And uh, now there was a tremendous turnout of firefighters, police officers, because he was a uh, it, uh, he was a firefighter, police officer, family. Fam- family. Uh, but the average citizen, uh, there was little or no turnout for it, and that was very that was very well publicized. Tom, I have never mm-hmm. seen uh, a, a, a more well publicized 
funeral right than than it was for herbie and attended too you mean. and attended yeah. yes oh yeah i you know they really did a number on that uh usually it's just a boom a shot in the dark and that that's about it now for you folks who don't realize it bill kogelman here is a retired he was a former um a battalion chief on the fire department you're also president of the union how many years with the fire department bill 46 46 years huh? yeah couldn't hold a job. No, I, my dad always told me it was permanent. And, uh, 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 not to bring up a sore subject, but did you play for uh, my son? Uh, that was 26 years ago. Yes. Did you play for him? Oh, yes. Did yeah. you? Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was with the Emerald Society at the time. Right, right, right. With, uh, uh, what's his name, Larry uh, Arlington Heights Copper. Uh no, Novak. No, Novak. 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 Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Good guy. Good guy. Yes. I had uh, when my daughter had my uh, uh, well, when she, when she had her daughter, my granddaughter. I had Larry come out to Northwest Community Hospital, and as we wheeled her out of the hospital, Larry pulled up in the squad, and quickly changed and played Amazing Grace. Oh. That's my granddaughter's mm. name grace great yeah. and uh, uh oh yeah and then when she was baptized larry's a great guy great guy he's doing and uh, not only him but other people are doing uh, a marvelous job for uh the kid that was was injured out there two years no it's more than that now three oh, four t- years ago tim sheehan tim sheehan yeah. yeah bob was at the uh they just had it him. Yeah, Tim's father and uh, brother were both on the Chicago Police Department. Right, Bob was. Uh, T- Tim Tim okay. was Tim was involved in a real horrific uh, oh, automobile accident, yeah. and uh, he's been in a wheelchair since. That that About had to four be four years ago. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, every every bit of four years. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, uh, I hope I'm not changing the subject because it is of the same uh, coincidence. Uh, obviously, it's going to be Christmas, and. Uh, a friend of my, mine and myself got talking about how we acted and how we uh, look forward to and and we pulled in the religion with it and the fantasy of it and the uh, uh, how you acted, you know, good or bad and all those little things that are in the song. And uh, so we started comparing what we witness nowadays and how uh, kids act, I hate to say, this grouping, but it, there's something to what I want to say. I have many grandchildren, and I'm uh, amazed how we uh, try to keep up the tradition for, and hopefully they're learning and they're learning from us, but truthfully, they just don't give a darn. And maybe we'll continue with this when we return. No, go ahead. We're not ready yet. Okay. I thought, I thought we were, uh, are we there breaking. Yet? I'm sorry. Watching the Getting a little ahead of ourselves, too. Any, anyway, uh, my point is that I don't want it to be on a negative side, but there is something that we, uh, again, with all our tragedies, with all the things we've talked about today, they just don't even have compassion. They don't have mannerism about you know, being uh, being respectful and thankful for whatever they got. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, they don't carry out the religious theme. And all it is, I want, I want, I'm, you know, and gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah. Well, so right. I, I I think I think that the the <coughs> the media and the uh, so-called uh, powers to be have really done a tremendous job in secularizing <laughs> Christmas. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've you know I, I have to hand it to them. I don't agree with it, of course. Mm-hmm. I still, you know, being you know as, as we all do here, we still wish people Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. You can't do that anymore in the workplace. Yeah, you even can't. Though it's it's, it's, happy, holiday, it's like happy holidays. I mean, they've totally eliminated Christ from from Christmas, and yeah, they, they, you know, it, right, it, it'd be like on Super Bowl Sunday saying, "Well, you can celebrate, but uh, don't mention football." Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, well, I that's what it's get, all about. I think they get more excited about football than possibly in a, in a case like this. Possibly the next day it is Christmas. It's uh, it it just is. Uh, I'm finding this uh, very sad 
because it won't be long. I agree with you. It Jan. won't be long. I think this it's is time all uh, going to come yeah, to an end. Time for a break. It won't be it's long until the break will be over, too. So hold that thought. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians, and we thank you for it. We'll be right back. But I think in recent years you're... the tires on your vehicle? Do you need motor oil or transmission fluid or the power steering fluid or antifreeze? How about the wiper blades? Are they in good sharp condition? Is the washer fluid in your tank full? How good is your battery? Do you need to replace light bulbs? Well, the place to pick up all these items is at Berkeley Auto Supply at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley. Stop in and see Tom, and he will help you get any part or supply you might need for your vehicle. Tom at Berkeley Auto Supply has everything you need for your vehicle. He has every tool, part, supply you might need from the top of the roof to the bottom of the chassis, and from bumper to bumper. You can call Tom at area code 708-544-8350. And he is located at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley. Tom's hours are Monday to Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock in the evening. Saturdays from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening. And he's even open on Sunday from 10 until 3. That's Berkeley Auto Supply, 5237 St. Charles Road. He is just east of Wolf Road and west of Mannheim Road, about two miles. You can call Tom at 708-544-8350 for parts, tools, and supply. That's Berkeley Auto Supply, 708-544-8350. And once again, he is located at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois. And now, friends, back to our announcer. Easy, Rich, easy. <laughs> well, we're all awake here, you know. <laughs> we're having a good time, and we haven't gotten on to the main subject yet. But first of all, let's talk a little bit more about the year, year going by. Some other big stories, like we had. There was an election in the U.S., wasn't there? Was anyone surprised with the outcome? Or uh, Rich, when you were surprised with the outcome of the presidential election? Or? I thought it would drag on for days, like it did in 2000. That's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was almost an instant one. You didn't think it dragged on? <laughs> oh, the oh yeah, no, you mean them. the county. They, oh, I mean the, the, the election ending. evening. We knew well, oh, oh, midnight, oh, yeah, yeah, Obama was yeah. reelected. Yeah. 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 That was yeah, a surprise. Was it was absolutely too much electioneering. Oh, yes. it was like, uh, that should be short. Learned from months. the European countries. Oh, oh my yes, God. Yes, it was four years of campaigning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was. Right. They start yeah. from the end. You I know. know uh, but, uh, that's what they all say. The, the minute they get elected, I do remember they're right in the campaign. I'm going to mention this time when I. Our grandson was born on the 5th of July in Georgetown Hospital in Washington, and I put out the email, and Tom sent back, he said, that's the best news to come out of Washington in the last three and a half years. Uh, there you go. <laughs> how true. How true. Nice little town at Georgetown. I think yeah. in Europe they will allow three months for campaigning, something like that. They allow? I think that's yeah. it, Al. Yeah. I don't know. They should Measured all give one good speech. Yeah, and let yeah. It, you know, yeah no, there's a limit. You know, you could only oh. campaign for so long, at least in England, my yeah. understanding mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Well, the, the, the next campaign has already started. Hil- Hillary's already starting to campaign. She's, she's, deni- she's denying it already. Huh? Right. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's sure. watching her, that fall mm-hmm. she had recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it yesterday or day before? Four days ago, Concussion. I yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Attention, tell you the truth. She yeah. said, anyway. But <laughs> she's uh, leaving the scene, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. as, as they say. Well, I know to her, her husband, Bill, is really pushing, because I supposedly mm-hmm. told her, he said, come on, Hillary, please run. I haven't had a date since I left the White House. (laughs) (laughs) Tom. (laughs) And I bet you that isn't true. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Like Jack Kennedy. Have a a secret door for all girls. (laughs) Who did that? 
Yep. No. JFK. JFK. Oh, JFK's yeah, with Jack Benny. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, my ears today are messed up, I guess, young folks. I got stuff in my mouth. Oh, oh, Jack Lord. Kennedy was notorious for yeah, that. Yeah. The things sure were different in those days, though. Nobody said anything about it, did they? No. I mean, it like no. A, no. Like well, that, that that yeah, what ha- whatever happened all that. There were rumors and things, but nothing substantiated. No. Nothing, right. Right. nothing right. 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 Yeah. Right. And what they're saying is, well, okay, so what? They all did it. You know, they bring yeah. up Roosevelt and, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem mm-hmm. comes in now that all of a sudden you, they like, got reformed like a bunch of hookers that reformed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's that old uh, line, if I jump off the bridge, are you going to jump off the bridge too, yeah, you know? Well, that's the same thing. idea, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you kindergarten know. mentality anyway. they got around here. Yeah, but anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with us having a Christmas around the corner, maybe I'm interjecting too much, but... Uh, I'm kind of curious to know what it, when in, in your childhood or uh, what did, one thing did you get that you never forgot or, or, or what did you do as families or, uh, you know, uh, did you like going to see Santa Claus and, well, yeah, we and did all that, those but things? You've got re- to remember, too, when we were kids, you didn't see anything about Christmas until the day after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Now for the day sure. after ha- for Halloween. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what? I, I, I remember my, my the, the best thing that I ever got was the train, the Lionel train mm-hmm. around the Christmas tree. And every year you'd get another and car or something car. to go with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And you took I wish good I, care of it, too. I, right? Oh, yeah. I wish I still had it. Mm-hmm. Those damn tinsel mm-hmm. from no. the tree <laughs> would fall down yeah. and then uh, uh, short it out. <laughs> and uh, you don't see tinsel anymore. I, no. I think it's something, well, it's, it's probably well, too expensive for one thing. Well, you know. the other thing was it had a tendency to short circuit the power yeah. system. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The damn things that fall down. We, uh, and, and my mother and, and, and my grandmother lived They'd spend hours. Yes, I was just going to say that. My my brother and I would spend hours. And then save it. And save it. Save it. Every year. Yeah. That was Uh, a pain in the butt, wasn't it? (laughs) The best of of my story. Not for me. They wouldn't let me touch it. (laughs) The best of my story is my brother brought in a stray cat the day before (laughs) the holiday. And we, you know, like you said, it took hours to have that tinsel just hang right. Took the cat we just minutes, got huh? down, <laughs> and it ran right up the tree. The tree was on the floor. <laughs> Everybody was mad dangerous. at each other, you know. <laughs> and and the cat went out the door. And yeah. that was the end of it. Well, <laughs> I, I remember my, my favorite present, you know, it, it it's ca- kind of along the lines of what I was talking about, being involved in the uh, uh, bagpipe bands. When I was about five years old, my I knew my mother and father had bought me it, it was wasn't a professional drum it was a toy drum mm-hmm. mm. I, I still remember this like it was yesterday it was well over mm-hmm. si- 60 years ago mm-hmm. and i screamed and cried this was before christmas it might have been like christmas eve morning and we we didn't exchange gifts that early mm-hmm. and i remember screaming and crying until my parents gave me that drum <laughs> and, and i remember unwrapping and here i am <laughs> and you're still so playing 60, it. 60, and, 60 years and later, still and I'm it. still you playing it. You loved it. Playing right. the drum, so I guess yeah. there must have been some something to it. Well, yeah. we, I had an erector set, and they they had an erector set at that time, not just uh-huh. a... Metal. With a little motor. Oh, yeah. yeah, motor and all right. that stuff. You put it together, and you had a big box. Damn things now are collectors. I think they mm-hmm. probably run $500,000 <laughs> so you get a full set of them. And, and, Jeanette a, has and a, a good tinker toy set. I was wondering, uh, the sole woman panel member, uh, what do you young girls look forward to having gotten under the Christmas tree? We guys with our record sets and electric trains. What do the well, young girls have beside course, dolls? Well, uh, you know, you, you've got to kind of get into the air of what. Uh, it, it would possibly be a, a Shirley Temple doll. Ooh, okay. You Maggie know, that's going back. But the pre-Barbie doll. Yeah. No, Barbie was, <laughs> no Barbie, you know, no, no. my kids. Yeah. Um uh, clothes for it, you know, you mm-hmm. that was it. And usually, like in my case, my mom sewed well. She made that, mm. you know, saying I helped her get it. To How about us. little ovens and things like uh, that? Yeah, uh, I came later, maybe. My girl, uh, we bake? had a four easy flat, bake. and my, the neighbors, you, they got that little oven did, that did you, you hear, would bake with. Yeah. You, you mentioned Easy Bake. Did you hear that story that the girl, this is true, a girl is meeting, who, who makes a Mattel, I think it is? The easy yeah. bake, the easy bake oven is pink, 
she some somehow <laughs> got a hold of the the manufacturers oh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah and said that the the easy bake oven should be uh designed like in muted oh, tone so it isn't gender indicating. it no. isn't gender specific and they'll do it won't they yeah so <laughs> so it isn't geared to to oh, girls that, that well, it was funny. green feminine yeah. girls yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the, the world is going to be much better off mm -hmm. if that happens mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. oh it's sort of funny story to go with that years ago they had a barbie oven or kitchen or something like that that came out it was quite mechanical and mm -hmm. i don't it only was out a short time the trouble was the girls didn't like it the boys did <laughs> huh <laughs> so, <laughs> well, now with the change of the law, all those boys can get married to each other. Right. Well, yeah. I, I remember another thing talking about when we were little. But my my second oldest brother, uh, he what he wanted for Christmas, he wanted a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. They had like these small little toy mm -hmm. sewing machines. They were metal. And I remember uh, the uh, our teacher, one of the nuns, Sister Agnes Virginia, when she heard about it. She was she was wor she was worried about him. She asked my mother, uh, "Is Michael uh, a little st strange?" I mean, well, he wants a sewing machine. Until yeah. she heard that he wanted the sewing machine so he could sew uh, Superman capes to put on his uh, yeah. his action figures and to, boys did to, that. to throw to throw him well, off the roof. You got to remember yeah. a lot of tailors. And ta men. there you are. Yeah. You, know, you can the, become a you know, fact, boy scout badger. Oh, oh anything. Yeah. You know. To put a little bit of side to that, I learned how to do sewing either from my mother or from grammar school. Now, when I got married, I had to teach my wife how to use a sewing machine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I believe that. Uh, you were talking about toys. Uh, uh, one another thing. Back to that first little story I had about you know, are the kids do they have value? Uh, you got something. You know you. You you didn't get fifty things. You know, you got a sled, yeah. or you got a ice skates, yeah. or you got that little furry uh, glove you've always wanted. You know, and you got, always got something else. But you didn't get tons yeah, of toys right, or right. oh nothing. And you had them. You know, and I, I, I as I said, a girlfriend and I were laughing about the, all these little things. So you know what? I wore them ice skates from second grade to eighth grade. I mean, my. What did I do? Did I unloosen them? You know, the foot size had a change, yeah. but I remember wearing them every winter. And there was quality there, then. Very, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you, if you, you will all recall, but Maury Mages opened up a. Mm. He was then a, an announcer. He opened up a big sports right, uh, right store right. in Chicago. Yeah. And if your box said Maury Mages, my God. You know, they must have spent ten dollars on those only seven or eight yeah. more major stores. Remember in the yeah. advertising? Finally, yeah. 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 finally, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he died. That was the end of the story. Yeah, the well, well, they, they had sold out the community, work. and they had this big one at LaSalle in Ohio. Right, right. Seven stores. Yeah, I think that was, yeah. last, that was the last. Mm -hmm. the last. Who did they sell in the community? I was wondering uh, what happened to the Murray Major stores. Sport Martyrs. Oh, oh, okay. There's still a place to go, though. Yeah, was you know. What was funny though was that there. My son asked me one time because he's got his kids and all. They're getting a lot of junk, you know, stuff like that. And he said, Dad, did I have all that stuff at the time? And he said, no, but you didn't know any better. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Your expectations were very low. Yes, yeah. yeah. And we all remember the popularity of the Polk Brothers Santa Claus. Oh, right? yes. Every other front oh, porch. Oh, That's yes. Nice. Well, yes. Still grew around. Yeah. Polk Brothers is a funny group there. They, they, uh, <laughs> I was told they never made any money in the uh, department store. They made money on the stock market. And they ran the department store as a hobby. Mm -hmm. A hobby. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. and, used to go in there, and used to go in there and dicker with the salesman all the time oh, for no. prices, you know. You, oh. oh, I can get over here Bruno's for ten dollars cheaper and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, Bruno's was in a very good spot. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. uh is uh any of those anybody ever seen any of those Polk Brothers Santa Claus out there anywhere? Oh. No, yeah. saw one a few years I, ago. Oh, you see, you know, we had one. one. Did you? Uh, anyone have one? Must have had yeah, one. Yeah, we got one. I don't know. It was around 1960. I think they were very big, the late mm -hmm. 50s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the uh, I used to go to uh, Folk Brothers and Bruno's all the time. You know, always fun to dicker with them for prices. You know, you got to want to buy a radio or whatever. Oh it was. yeah. Well, I remember yeah. walking in. About five salesmen would come up to you and. Oh you know, God, yes. Gang you through yeah. the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah now, nowadays you can't find a salesman. Right. But you know we had beautiful uh, windows in our stores. 
you know, when mm -hmm. Sears was, you know, uh, yeah, beautiful. Marshall, Marshall Fields. Oh, you could. It, Macy's yeah. still can't compare to Marshall. No, going right. to no, Marshall right. Fields. no, that was a fantasy. Yeah, yeah. no, that they can't. And, uh, and going in there for breakfast. Uh, well, Lord knows I'm no businessman, yeah. but I would never ditch that name Marshall Fields. No. Well, here, here's, the, here's the story I got told about, uh, you know, Carson's, they're, they're part of Bonton or whatever it is, uh, and each of their stores had a same paper with different names on it. And the claim from mate uh, from uh, yeah Macy's, Macy's was the fact that it was too while, expensive too. Yeah. to do this, and they didn't want to do the change yeah. of it. Yeah, do the changes. Well, they, they, they were Simplify told that they were going to have a real hard time at least the first year. And downtown, I think they lost two or three managers because they, the business fell off so drastically, and it's still. Now you can go to any discount store and get the same thing you get at Macy's, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's not a big deal going there. And Macy's. Macy's. Or Macy's, I yeah. should say. Yeah. You can go to Carson. The difference comes in now, though, they play games with the manufacturers. They go out there, they got exclusive rights to Tommy Hilfiger or whatever his name mm -hmm. is. If, if you bought something at Marshall Fields, Forever. it was classy. Forever. It was classy. Yeah. You know, you, you were buying... The best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buying the best. Absolutely. Those of you on television yeah. can see this. But you know another <laughs> thing is... John just brought in a Marshall Fields box to show you. Yeah. So. A yeah, distinctive green. Yeah, yeah. distinctive yeah. green. An another but thing that I think, items, too, yeah. is, is the diminishing feeling. Uh, our w our, our uh, malls are a convenience. There's no doubt if you want to get to a certain store. But the, f the yeah. real thrill was to go to... The one Marshall Fields, the, the one, hmm. you know, State Street, State Street, yeah. Weeble, yeah. exactly. And see the 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 right. clock. We used to go down there, and we still do every oh, year. Yeah. We go down Even and we sing was a for fun the place. Salvation Army. Uh -huh. We do it for the the uh, uh, you know the the people that do it for us. We collect mm -hmm. for them, and and we have the 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 buckets out there uh -huh. and stuff like that. But we sing underneath the clock, clock. Yeah. and and we Tradition. will not say we're going underneath the Macy's clock. Mm -mm. It's it's we're singing Marshall under the Fields. Marshall Fields I think, clock. I think right. that's one of the things that Macy's they underestimated Chicago. Right, yeah. right. You know, it's it. like a cellular field. I, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I, yeah. I'll never stop calling it Comiskey. No. I mean, well, or, is our, or is our president called a Kaminsky? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Along well, with the Navy corpsman. Yeah. 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 You know, you're talking about. States. Yeah. You're talking about the Marshall, about the clock at Marshall Fields. You know, uh, Ken Little. Yes. And uh, used to be with uh, Eddie Schwartz on WGN Radio, and they used to do uh, a live remote broadcast uh, there every year. Right. Uh, oh, uh, to raise money for the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we started, John. Yeah. Uh, the other, yeah. The other God rest his soul. He was a great, great, uh, great person. Oh, we oh, had yes. a good time out yes. there, great you know, guy. and uh, uh, we, everybody being uniform. And we did it th this year, too. Mm -hmm. And I see the only thing that was advertised was Hiram Growl with the state police. They, <laughs> Hiram was out there singing. <laughs> singing. You couldn't see him. I mean, Hiram is kind of, you know. And another thing, too, when you, you go, went into the store. I know I went in there many times with my mother and my sister. Uh, they had the big Christmas tree that was many oh, stars high up, the walnut mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we don't want to forget Weebolts, oh. right. the apartment store. The oh. Boston store, the, the Bear store, store. The Weebolts. How about yeah. the, even well, the Dime store? There's yeah. still a Boston store up in Milwaukee. Really? Yeah, right. I, I never I figured know that, that out. But <laughs> my uncle lived up in Whitefish Bay, and he was a salesman for them and for the one down here. And I could never grown up at the, yeah. the Boston store. You got to go all the way to mm -hmm. Boston, <laughs> Uncle Larry. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. well, one yeah. thing one thing that always brings to my mind about Weebolts is right after Thanksgiving, WGN Radio every year, as far as like as long as I can remember, cinnamon had bear. the cinnamon bear. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. And which came on WGN AM seven uh, seven twenty at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. And it ran all the way up until just mm -hmm. a couple of days before what before Christmas. Patty, Patty, Patty Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yeah. He introduced the Look, Cinnamon Banner. Right? <laughs> yeah, looking for the Silver Star. Did anybody watch, uh, was it Channel 9 about a week ago? 
they had that the lost, lost tape of tape, oh, Bozo, Bozo? Bozo. Oh, Bozo. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. I I really oh, yeah. I, yeah. I enjoyed I, that. That was really I've had the pleasure yeah. of bringing my children. <laughs> I think I told you one time uh, we I got did. picked up by this cab that had uh, uh, the goose. I can't think. Is it Garfield, 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 Garfield goose? goose. Yeah. yeah. In the cab, yeah. and it was in it yeah. was caged for us. But usually it sat alone, and that cab would be full of feathers <laughs> and. Yeah. You know, no, we had a good, that uh, was good quite time a thing. there. I when my when when my daughter had her first, mm -hmm. uh, the minute she said she was pregnant, I That's put what it I did because it took three and four yeah. years to well, get yeah. a ticket. Oh, I, I, the I, only reason I got the tickets right away is because I was the chief of that battalion, oh, oh, <laughs> and I um, and I got tickets for my I got tickets for my sister and my nephew Brian because I worked with W with I was with Illinois Bell and I installed the cables from Bradley Place all the way down Addison okay. Street mm. and I got to be very good friends with the people at WGN and I asked hey can we get a couple of tickets and they they snuck them over to me <laughs> and uh, uh, and you know um, Kevin the manager of uh, WRHS our station that picks us up from Norwich he belongs to a club that uh, that's involved in these old time uh, programs like Bozo Circus, and in a, a week or so ago, he was on WGN. In fact, he went on the air at one thirty in the morning. Uh, that radio was a week ago, that. WGN Radio yeah. in the morning, and he was on, and he talked to, about uh, Bozo Circus and and all the, and all these programs that that were now are history to, to us. But we used to watch them. I mean, God. You come home from school at lunchtime. You you had your eyes glued yep. to the television, uh, watching Bozo Circus. Well, and you uh, know, ta talking about Bozo Circus, it reminds me. It couples in with probably one of the greatest arrests made in the history of the Chicago Police Department. There were six retirees that used to drink, and this is a true story. Oddly enough, there were six retirees that used to drink in a in a joint on Pulaski, and naturally during the day you know when retirees like to go out and have a few and they were in a bozo bucket pool they put six numbers in a hat and drew they each drew one every day they threw in a, a buck a piece and the chicago police gambling unit locked locked them up <laughs> Big uh, right i said i told the guys i said you know we we all stand a little taller for the action that you have taken Crack, they cracking, they cracking really the great, uh, cracking the great bozo, oh, yeah. the great bozo bucket <laughs> yeah. uh, gambling well, ring. From huh? Retirees from what? <laughs> they were just, you know, not Every, to, yeah, 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 it, 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 different walks of life. They really had to be uh, <laughs> the uh, bozo, uh, the famous bozo bucket pin. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My, my son went to a bozo circle a couple of times because the fact is that. Some of these guys, they waited so long for the tickets. By the time they got, <laughs> they were teenagers. Enough, you know, huh? By the time the ticket came through, they were too, they weren't interested in yeah. going. So no, you, I hope they now. were married. That's <laughs> 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 true. To that. But he, so they handed them down, and my son got tickets. You know, mm -hmm. he, my wife never applied for a ticket that I remember. But okay, now does everybody know who Bozo was? Bob Bell. Bob, Bob, Bob Bell. Bell. Bob Bell. Bell. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Do you know and there were uh, like 28 Bozo franchises yes. around the country That's in local right. markets? Yeah. Right. Originally from and this guy, uh, Larry Harmon, had it. And Bob. The different markets had them. This was the last one in Chicago. Yeah, they said it was supposed to be the best of the group, too. Bob Bell was a staff announcer for WGN Radio for many years. And when we used to go to the Aragon Ballroom to broadcast uh, the old time, the big band music, I sat and rubbed elbows with uh, with Bob Bell many many times. Mm -hmm. well, was it, wasn't he married to uh, Do Lee Phillips? Wasn't was it Lee Phillips? She was yeah. married to a Bell. I don't think it was the same one. But so I was just going to say I'm it was sure. the Bell family. Yeah. But uh, yeah. he was also Andy Starr. He was a keeper of the Odeon Theater with the, on the Three Stooges show. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize <laughs> he was, that. Yeah. I didn't realize All right, that. Hey kids, we got some brothers today here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that was that was quite a program last week. Uh, yeah, that's uh, all part of that. That's part of it. Well, yeah. Back memories, right? Oh, mm -hmm. it sure did. Now even before, now we talk about noontime shows or whatever. Before Bozo, they had lunchtime little theater on Channel Nine, Channel Five, NBC in the early fifties, and little had Uncle Johnny Coons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't get to see Tom. Could see him. Tom could go home for lunch. I couldn't. Live too far away. <laughs> that's right. Remember his the last day on? He's he's closing out on a Friday, and he says. There are kids. God bless you. Goodbye for now. See you Monday. And he wasn't off yet. And then he said, 
that would hold the little illegitimate children for another week. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he was gone. He was gone next, you know. He didn't say illegitimate children, though. The most I can remember about that, we didn't, I didn't have TV till I was 17, mm-hmm. uh, is my kids watching things like Miss Francis, the school yeah. teacher, oh, and sure. yeah. and things like when that. When Strachey was on, remember that? Yeah. Uncle Wynn? Yeah. yeah. Go Wynn the, the folk singer? There was, there was uh, a funny story about uh, Miss Francis. I think she was in New York one time, and she was on, they were panning one of these shows anyway, and they... They, you know, were asking occupations, and she she told them who she was, and they didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> she, they she didn't had a good know her. Time with them. <laughs> I seen. I don't. It's been so long ago. I don't remember all of it, but uh, I remember seeing the show at the time. Well, sort of Groucho Marx was returning to uh, to America on, on board a luxury liner. You were supposed to declare what your occupation was. He wrote smuggler. <laughs> Some guy detained him. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> my my favorite story about someone tra- in the. In the media, trying to describe what they do, uh, Howard K. Smith was in supposedly uh, a small pub in Ireland, and naturally there was no television and naturally no American television. So he struck up a conversation with the old timer sitting next to him, uh, and he said, "And the guy says to him, you know, so what? What is it that you do over there?" And, uh, well, he didn't want to say he was an anchor man because he'd think it was probably something to do with the Navy. The Navy. <laughs> so he said, uh, so he said the best way he could describe it, he says, uh, well, I, uh, I read the news on television. And the, the guy says, not much of a job, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the best. <laughs> Donnie Trotter must have, uh, taken that from Groucho, uh, uh, who's uh who's that? he worked for security. Deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That was a dumb answer, wasn't mm-hmm. it? The guy, they yeah. caught his with the gun at the airport. Is, are we talking oh, yeah, about the no, same? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You could talk about yeah. this, this he said he had a security well, job, and I said, can yeah. you just see him yeah. <laughs> and they getting that little well, side job? Well, and they can't prove that he even no. worked for him. No, and, and, not you know, at all. And, it, and it's dumb, and I heard that they, they, and it was loaded. The clip oh, was in, but they it. took it out. And reported it, that it was out of the gun. And, what and, could he uh, have been thinking? What a, what a, not no. thinking. <laughs> no, he wasn't thinking. Yeah, no. Just too full of yourself. Well, you know, no, yeah, but right, he right. power. Uh, yeah. well, we got a, under power, didn't There we? was a story, too, about this woman who was smuggling uh, uh, drugs. She just had a uh, breast implant in her. <laughs> So she what? needed relief. She huh? had a, so it, finish the story. Yeah. Yeah. She, <laughs> had a, she had an implant in her breast. Oh, my God. Yeah, they, I don't know, they became suspicious or something like that when she went through uh, customs and they checked her out. And I guess that, uh, they found three pounds of Coke. Oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> was it Diet yeah. Coke? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it was about, about $3 million worth of things money. have changed with airport <laughs> security. Tom and I... Took our first flight together to New York. Remember that from Cleveland? Right. Yes. We walked down. We're, we both had our guns, right? We're right. both on the job. We're both new on the job, more or less. And we were off in November because you get the you know leftovers. And we and uh, there was no checking you out. We walked around New York City with the. Of course, I think the cops there wouldn't have cared either. But there was right. no never a question. There was never a. Well, right. unfortunately. But but I, I think we didn't I have kid, all that security that was, thing that was either. Very pre nine eleven. That was nineteen sixty eight. Yeah. November. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember when okay. I was a kid, we went out to O'Hare Field. On a lark, we would park almost anywhere. We climbed on the international airport roof. They had an observation deck up there. Right. Yeah. They had a control tower at the end, and the door was wide open. You could walk right into the control mm-hmm. tower if you wanted to. And you could yeah. sit there all day. And, you could sit and there all day. Nobody, nobody bother you. Yeah. Same with uh, Midway. Uh, oh. We used to get off right at the corner of 63rd and Cicero, walk right into like a small building or an office there was the tower and get on the plane yeah i mean there were you know get your luggage and mm-hmm. or or check it you know oh, yeah I, nothing I, that's nothing I, like no, today totally nothing right. i remember we still have the um, right, i'm sorry okay I, when i left for the air force we went to midway and we came back it was closed and o'hare you know four years later open. o'hare was open so mm-hmm. Midway was really dead for a while there. It was oh, yeah, spooky. Right. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, there was, yeah. There was, there was, there was music playing on the terminal. There's nobody around. Nobody. Uh, nobody was around. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you could walk in and 
Like it was it a great, just said great it. place to fly out of too at the time because yeah. nobody was sure bothering you. No, it's not five months from my house, so you know. Oh, well, yeah, well, you know. Well, we went there one time. My sister-in-law lives not too far from there, down Archer Avenue, so we just uh, parked the car by her house one time. Excuse me, panelists. We'll be right back after these messages of interest and importance. Exhibitors Carpet has changed their name to Carpet Warehouse at 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago and their new location at 440 Sheridan Road in Highwood, Illinois called Carpet of Highwood. Stop in at Carpet Warehouse at 4300 West Montrose Avenue. Their phone number 773-283-0100 or at 440 Sheridan Road in Highwood, and their number is area code 847-266-1400. For carpets in your living room, dining room, bedroom, then family room, stop in at either location for a great deal. Once again, Carpet Warehouse, 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago, and their phone number is area code 773-283-0100 or Carpet of Highwood at 440 Sheridan Road. And their phone number is 847-266-1400. Remember, if you need a carpet for your living room, dining room, den, or family room, stop in at 4300 Montrose Avenue in Chicago, area code 773-283-0100 or 440 Sheridan Road in Highwood, the Carpet of Highwood, and their number is area code 847-266-1400. And now back to our panel. Well, the other thing I remember about Christmas, we were talking about just about trees. Wait a minute, wait a minute, minute. I'm going to say something here. Uh Now back to our panel. (laughs) Go. We were were kids, we used to have the real trees, you know, and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. Needles. Being the inventive Mm -hmm. group that we were, I was about six or eight at the time, and we used to drag all the trees from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There was a place over on Addison uh, in Sacramento, it was like an empty lot there. Yeah. A prairie. Yeah. Yeah. It's called prairies. They used to pile them up. (laughs) <laughs> Some guy to light them up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, what are we talking about? A fire. Yeah. And the go. poor firemen would have to go over there and put them out. Or that you was had too a, late by the time. Or you, had a dog, you uh, brought them to the, for mulching. You know, you yeah. had yeah, well, your they, tree. Yeah. They used to cook the uh, paint off the, <laughs> the porches in the yeah. area around it. <laughs> oh, good well, idea. I can remember we had was it Ron Hillbot, Tom, over at 65th and. Well, God, I guess there was a prairie there. And I put a bunch of trees there, and we were making a fort out of it, right? So yeah. Is, and we're in there. Some kids, some old kids, there must have been 12 or 13 come along. And they come in there. And while we're in there, the guy lights them on fire. So of course, he got real quick, you know. And so the woman yells, put that the water. And the kid says, what damn water? Back to, you know, and we don't, we don't break. This, one, this is probably a Harper High School. Get the school, snow. You know, you know. <laughs> but... Um, I remember that. I remember That's my true. That one. That's true. Or you were at home after you took down the tree, mm-hmm. and you were cleaning the sap off the carpet because oh, yeah. remember how it used to. Dr- uh, and and for months after, you'd be built. picking those damn needles, and the needles out of the trunk of your car. Yeah, and then, always. You know. Yeah. Can you remember, Bill? Uh, was there a time when um, you still had? This is probably before your time and our my time both. But they put candles on the trees. Oh. Yeah. oh. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I remember yes, my first grandma coming on the it, job but, and the old timers up in, and especially up in, in, in the neighborhoods where they had a lot of Jews mm-hmm. would put those on and we'd get fires. Mm-hmm. They yeah. Were about, yeah, yeah. Michael but, said it was that a round tin no, bottle. Oh, Michael Jean. a fire waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Michael Jean said, you know, it was, I mean, he died a you know, years ago, he was a fire lieutenant, but he said if he had it, if it had it his way, you'd put the tree up early evening. Take it down before you go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I remember talking about candles on the tree. My father said that he uh, 
that was a big thing when they they would posi- they had holders and they would position the candles and get them all upright. Then they'd light them, and they'd stand there with a bucket of water, yeah. and, <laughs> and they and they'd watch them, you know, burn down. I mean, that was the big thrill. Wow. You know, they lasted maybe, you know, fifteen or twenty mm-hmm. minutes, mm-hmm. and then that and was, nobody had a camera that was, in those days. Right, that, 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 no. that was no. that, that was that was it. Yeah. yeah, you know the story about how Christmas Eve really started, though, was the uh, in the northern Europe. It was sort of a boring winter. In order to liven the house up a little bit, they used to bring a tree in. Is that a German tradition? I mean, yeah, German from German, or it could be Polish, or, mm-hmm. or you know, it's just Northern Europe. I think mostly Germans were doing it, mm-hmm. and the Catholic Church didn't like it because of the fact they thought it was idol worship oh, and all this other pagan, stuff. But yeah, yeah pagan worship, mm-hmm. and you know how the Catholics are. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, it you know it, it was it pretty soon it got decorated and stuff like that there and. Uh, and where it really started was uh, uh, Prince Albert, when he married uh, Queen Victoria, he uh, was from Germany, and consequently they had the Yule logs. But when he came there, he, he liked the trees, so consequently the trees really got popular because of Prince Albert, and hmm. you know it sort of migrated down to what it is now. But now we I, copied it. So you can blame. I think for, that's all phony. Now. <laughs> I know when Christ was born, there were Christmas trees around there. Yeah, right. Oh, desert, yeah. desert trees. December twenty fifth. <laughs> right, right, right. In the middle of summer. <laughs> who, who was not born in and December? Albert and Albert was a very, very heavy smoker too. <laughs> yeah, he's the, the guy we used to call the the, the, the uh, tobacco stores, and we'd ask him, "Do you have a Prince Albert in a can?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll let him out. He's suffocating him. Well, and it's always funny though. The rabbis always hated when the uh, Jews would come out there with the Hanukkah bush. <laughs> <laughs> said, no, no, no. <laughs> and it really has no significance as far as Christmas is concerned, except for decoration. Yeah. But they made it a uh, thing that it's Christian. It's not Christian. It's what's pagan originally. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know. They made it to sell money. Well, that's. To sell to make yeah, money. Well, that, you know, that's, <laughs> that's why they start Christmas at. Uh, <laughs> At the Halloween yeah. time, yeah. Now no, no, it's September, I think. Did any of you have much of a mistletoe tradition oh, combined yeah. with Christmas? Oh, it's oh, always good for feeding dogs. We always, <laughs> <laughs> we always hung one, you know, between dining room and front room. And yeah, ours, it's when the guests was, came. Yeah. yeah, ours was more, you know, the kiss and the whole thing like that. I don't but think too many did that, though. No, no but we, we did. Yeah. We, all, we always had a mistletoe. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a parasite, too. That, uh, yeah, it's a bit <laughs> parasite, yeah. <laughs> when I lived in so France. So bad. When I was in the Army living in France, all the trees around where I lived all had mistletoe on them. Yeah. Which is what you say, a parasit- well, mm-hmm. parasitical. Mm-hmm. That reminds me, was it, who was the store that, was it uh, Carson's had Uncle Mistletoe? Yes. Yeah, I think it was. Yes. Yeah. Carson, no, that, was, yes. That, was Mar- that was Marshall Fields. Fields? Oh, okay, well, yeah. I mean, the, the characters. Yeah. Well, yeah, characters, Patty, right. yeah. Patty, Patty the Bear, Patty. Patty, Patty the Bear. Cinnamon Bear. Cinnamon. Well, that was Patty or Cinnamon. We Patty or Cinnamon. That was another one out there, too. It was Patty, Patty, oh. Because I know, I always yeah, remember my, the Irish. Oh, my father, <laughs> yeah, all right. my yeah. father didn't like uh, Marshall Fields with Uncle Mistletoe. He used to say that that was trying to mm-hmm. remove Christ from mm-hmm. oh, from, Chris, from Christmas, make it completely mm-hmm. secular. So oh, okay. we, and had, we have. Right. We had a guided have. mistletoe We've later, right? We've done a good job. Yeah, the other one was, of course... Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, mm-hmm. which was... Uh, yeah. Was that... Uh, one of the stores got that, too. Yeah, that was uh, Funky Wards, I believe, started oh, that. Yeah. Okay. I think you're right yeah. about that, Al. Yeah. Two people Wards. in a yeah, living uh, uh, guy started that song just for his kids or something. Yeah, yeah. and then oh. Gene Autry made it popular. Oh, right. oh it's mm-hmm. the most... Your kids do remember Gene Every Autry, year. though. <laughs> Every year it comes out with new records of the new presses of it, you know. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. you know, just... Fellow everybody in Lincolnwood wrote it. Everybody always went to Midnight Mass. Oh, in right. fact, Midnight you just Mass couldn't was the thing to go. And, and I don't know anybody there. anymore that that does. Some that. churches don't, don't even have it, it anymore. Won't be this year with the little guy. Yeah. Even some Protestant out. churches have the midnight right. services. But I mean, uh, uh, so. danger got into the story. I mean, yeah. here we go again. You well, know, you got to you got to remember. Uh, Christ was actually probably born in the middle of summer. Yes. Or in April. Spring the whole calendar. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then yeah. one of the popes, yeah. I forgot who it was now, that I really care, oh. decided to change it because of the fact that the pagans had a big celebration around the, the end of uh, December, beginning yeah. of, well, the calendar changed, but you know, at that the new time. Year. The winter solstice. Very, winter yeah. solstice. Mm-hmm. They had a big, so, so consequently it was changed yeah. to 
enhance the uh, pagans to join the Christian religion. It, it superseded the Saturnalia, I think is the feast they called it, which, which uh, in, in, in Rome, it was Roman. Uh, the uh, oh, winter solstice comes on December 25th, so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, how would you like uh, to hear about the poinsettia plant? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to. Or the Christmas uh, ship. It's, it's uh, Aunt Jeanette's to story time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We're trying to round out everything: our tragedies and our fun and reminiscing. And uh, I have just a little bit to tell you about the uh, poinsettia. We say poinsettia. But it is poinsettia, so uh, uh, I guess we're going to have to correct yourself right there. Uh, about the 17th century in southern Mexico, a girl named Pepita had no gift for mass or the baby Jesus lying in the manger. And from a field, she picked weeds and offered them as a gift. And in a few days, lo and behold, it became a beautiful red petal plant. Sometime later, a botanist from North Carolina became the first ambassador to Mexico, and his name was Joel R. Poinsett. The flower was named in his honor. Hmm. And so that's an update on hmm. one yeah. more of our stories well, about yeah, the it, and it is very, very poisonous. Yeah. It is. Animals, right? It exactly. is. It's never yeah. let your pet near a poinsettia plant. Right. Well, it's that poisonous to people. So what we uh, we oh think yes, it would be. No, we think it was a flower. Is that no, leaves, no, right? No. Let's try. That's, that's our uh, the, was their our way of looking paper. at it is leaves. Their leaves in the blossom. Yes, oh, yeah. uh, a when weird. it comes. Blossom, yeah. Well, yeah, you know they do that, but it's about the size of your finger. And I now see them in red, pink, and white, so they must have. Uh, but the, the point said it doesn't really bloom for winter. It has to be forced to bloom for winter. Oh. Yeah. It actually blooms, I think, in the spring or it's something. It's a like long-lasting plant, and we seem to throw out that yeah, little branch as right. soon as it ends, but it can it, 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 uh, it can uh, come back and be a beautiful plant again. It wouldn't again. be hardy in our, our climate. Here That's right. our right. problem. Inside. It's I, one I of our problems. I had one that was about four or five foot tall before I finally died. Oh. Mm. I went to That's get amazing. my knee replaced, and my wife didn't know how to take care of plants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, but I notice everybody's plant is out the door yeah, in a couple I, of weeks, but no. they, if I, they do last. If I last. get hold of one... No, they are they, hardy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as, as a, uh, a tradition, is that an American tradition from by way of Mexico or vice versa? Yeah. I don't know. So. I, I, I don't have any answers to it. It's just that I wanted to interpret he, how did, just, how did we pretty, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah, start I that story. It has no value whatsoever. I think so. That. Uh, and it it's is a pretty story. plant. It's a very <laughs> nice decoration. Those yeah. red colors, um, red, red and green, I mean. But I do red have an article here on the um, uh, this uh, ship that was uh, always okay. called the uh, Christmas tree ship. That was not its name. The idea was that within uh, November and so on, this mm -hmm. captain would come across with his trees from Michigan. So uh, here, here's how it goes. They called him uh, Captain Santa. For 25 years, he sailed fresh-cut trees from the northern tip of Lake Michigan to the southwest corner of Clark Street Bridge. For Chicagoans, his arrival meant one thing. Christmas was just around the corner. Captain Herman Schooneman had used a variety of ships in the late 1800s in early 1900s, uh, and in this case, this ship was called the Rouse Simmons, a rickety old three-mast schooner that the public seemed to enhance, embrace. Word would trickle along the docks, its festive message proclaiming to the streets above, the Christmas tree ship is here. Thousands of stacked trees, snow still on the branches, Fill the decks of the Rouse Simmons, the smell of the spruce and the pine wafting over the bowl. Uh, Shunemon would tie a Christmas tree atop the main mast, trumpeting the ship's arrival on the Chicago River. He would string colored lights, a novelty at that time, to the 127-foot schooner he co-owned in 1910. Elsie 
hazel and per pearl would make wreaths and garlands. He even crammed a small cabin abroad where the people would dine and chat with the crew. It became a social event, according to the Tribune accounts. Sh Shunan men knew how to sell trees. Forget the middleman, local stores. He sold his trees to the people. The Tribune reported how he would routinely hang a hand-printed sign on the dock. The Christmas tree ship. My prices are the lowest. Six to seven foot trees sold for 25 cents to one dollar. <laughs> and a few hotels and businesses pre-ordered the 20 foot trees and paid a little more. But some of the trees were never sold and he would give them to poor families, churches, and orphanages. He was an excellent marketeer. He was a bit of a showman, said Colleen Henry, a volunteer on the Archives Committee of St. Paul's United Church of Christ. Um, this family, the Schunemans, were members of the church known in those days as German United Evangelical Lutheran St. Paul's Congregation. It was at LaSalle, LaSalle Drive and Ohio Street. Uh, and in this case, St. Paul's, the church he belonged to, will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Christmas tree ship. And that is done on November 18th uh, of this, uh, in this last month. Um, Captain Schooneman was a very jovial man, a very generous spirit. And... Um, they would venture into the woods and help the locals cut down the trees. And after loading them up, they would sail home. And all it took was about a six-week journey up and back. If everything worked out, he would celebrate the holiday with his family in Lincoln Park because he had a little bit of profit in his hand. There were dozens of other tree ships, but the Chicagoans trusted the Shunanmen ship. He and his older brother August sailed what is believed to be the first boatload of Christmas trees to Chicago in December 1887. But it was risky business. Winter gales and ice were a constant threat. On November 9, 1898, a storm sank August Schoenenem's sh uh, ship, the S near Glencoe. He and his four men drowned, as the Tribune reports. Now, you have to understand, that was 1898. Now, Herman Schunemann, who would have been abroad, had stayed behind to care for the family lumber business and tend to his wife, who gave birth to twins, Hazel and Pearl, on October 6th. And... Um, they were baptized at St. Paul's less than three weeks after August died. Schunemann carried on the family business. Year after year, he made the trees and the boy, uh, cut the trees, made the voyage. But in November 1912, disaster struck again. After making the 300 mile trip to Michigan's Upper Peninsula, Schunemann loaded thousands of trees aboard the 44-year-old schooner. On November 21st, weather conditions were deteriorating when the Rouse Simmons started to bob home. As temperatures dropped and rain and 50-mile-per-hour winds kicked, some high as 20 feet over the deck, ice sprayed down the trees, made a heavy weight for the ship, and the hull started lowering into the water. A uh, Coast Guard station spotted a ship matching the schooner's description, its sails in tatters, its flag at half-mast to s d uh, signal distress. But the ice-covered ship seemed to vanish in the storm, November 23rd. Schunemann's family waited, as did a lot of families and friends of the other crew members. Days went by, still no word. The news led the Tribune's front page on December 5, 1912.
Christmas ship lost on the lake with 17 on board. Then hundreds of evergreens started to wash ashore at Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Families remained mm -hmm. hopeful, but a note reportedly written by Schooneman was found along the Wisconsin coast. It seemed to sum up what happened on that Friday. Everybody, it, it said, everybody goodbye. I guess we are all through. Sea washed over our deck load Thursday. During the night, the small lifeboat was washed over, leaking bad. God help us. There were no survivors, and a Chicago tra tradition turned to grief. Years later, it was reported that Schooneman's oilskin wrapped wallet washed ashore, a rubber band still holding it together and inside were a few newspaper clippings about his voyage. His wife, affectionately called Christmas Tree Lady, continued the family business, and she died in 1933. Her daughters carried on for a few more years, but by the end of that decade, <coughs> the uh, Christmas Tree ship seemed to fade uh, from the city's landscape. A diver found the well-preserved remains of Rouse Simmons in 1971 resting in about 170 foot deep waters northeast of Two Rivers, which is in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Nearly a hundred years after its sinking, Schooneman's legacy lives on in reenactments in the museums, books, and music and in April, it adopted a resolution recognizing Schooneman's contribution. And on October 31st, it authorized the placement of a cast bronze plaque next uh, uh, to put a bronze plaque next year on the southwest corner of Clark Street Bridge, adorning the plaque a line drawing of Ralph Simmons, the Christmas tree ship. And that's my little story so about it, the so little ship. So it went ship. down twice. It, well, it, no, the... two different ships. Two, well, well, yeah, yeah, two different ships. Yeah, uh -huh. that's small, right. Of the that same was, yeah. family, each were losing a part of their yeah, family on yeah, the ship. I, that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. that, that two well, different. They, they also mentioned there was more than one ship that was really right, and they, with that. The object yeah. of those 17 people was 16 were men, one was a woman, and then the headlines wrote, Captain's wife lost in the, uh, yeah, on the ill-fated craft. But the truth was, the second man under him was also called Captain, and it was his, his wife, okay. not Schooneman's wife. Yeah. Um, just an interesting thing, because... Uh, well, we still do that. They just did it here before the... Police and well, fire go guard. out, yeah. right? And they go out and they take it in and you right, know, and, then, and it, it in. might be a, a runoff I don't know of where that those tradition. Trees go now. Oh, that's a uh, Coast Guard went up there and picked up a bunch of trees for charity, and what they came back. It? Well, they, and they called it the Christmas show. Right, right. Yeah. and and the point I'd like to bring out is that uh, that's what tradition is. Yeah, that yeah. we we did the same things year after year. We looked forward to what we did. Uh, little things had big meaning. And uh, and I think that's uh, getting lost, and it, now it's up to us to preserve that uh, type of feeling if we could. Tell those kids that are coming I up know. now. Tell I know, those Bill. kids now. You just mentioned it, it before. It bothers me. Oh yeah, yeah, sure it does. And you yeah. know what? They're really missing on, out on something yep. great. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's what the Jews have a lot of tradition. tradition. Yes, yes. Tr I yes. have a lot of tradition. Yeah. Oh, I mean, how many thousand years? Yeah, or, you know, yeah. Was it six thousand, seven thousand years, or uh, according to the calendar, it's four thousand years. 4, 000, but, okay. but the trouble is, the calendar is sort of misleading because he had a problem with a month. It was uh, written over, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it wasn't only that, but they had twelve months. I believe they had twelve months, but the problem was there were short months. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So now they have. Uh, 13th month throw in there periodically. I don't know how exactly. Sounds like the police department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straightening things out every four or five but years. But there was, there was a big thing, I think about 300 years ago, 
Were they corrected for the Gregorian calendar? Made it. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about anything because uh, isn't it in a week or so the world's coming yeah, to an end? Yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, twenty first. Don't pay your bills this month. That's right. And a good, good car, new car. Yeah. Well, uh, it was uh, twelve, twelve, twelve. It was supposed to be a disaster, and then uh, yeah, oh past God. that one. Well, yeah, that so. was a disaster because so many people got married. Then. Right. <laughs> got away, got away for thirteen, 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 huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy. Uh, oh, baby, look out. Yeah. Well, isn't it uh, that that date won't come back up for a hundred years or yeah. something? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah I mean, you don't think of it yeah. like that. Yeah. Now they got the progressive numbers. You know, nobody ever 11, thought of all of this. Well, let's let's make let's make a let's make a pact that we all meet on that date. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. At Denny's, at Denny's, <laughs> if they're still in business. You take a look at some of the stuff they put out there. You said, "Oh, some of them have nothing else to do because they come out with this, you know, weird but, stuff." Uh, this makes me it's wonder. Makes before, I wonder it, yeah. what was a what would a quarter then mm -hmm. be equal to now? If you're paying twenty five cents for a tree, would it be about? 10, uh, 20 about, bucks, 30, 50 bucks, maybe? Yeah, yeah. something like that. <laughs> Where? Because I know I I I bought models for my you know, uh, to put together, and I remember paying a uh, dollar. Twenty-five for it. Now they're oh yeah, oh everything's relative. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty dollars for the same same model, basically. You're not going to get a quarter bottle of beer anymore either. I had a I no. had a, gr a girlfriend. <laughs> or a nickel with, coke. I, I had, <laughs> you try too. <laughs> I had a girlfriend who was a model, and I had to wait till the glue dried before I could kiss her. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll just pretend that I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that I didn't hear what's that. What's the difference between girls and boys? <laughs> Uh, young boys collect soldiers, and young girls collect uh, play with dolls, and older bo old boys play with dolls, and the girls collect the soldiers. <laughs> Something oh. like that. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah, All right. Cut his cut his mi cut his microphone <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. You're through. Yeah. Oh my I'm not, as long as nobody gets, gets here and starts pounding the table with their shoe or anything like that. You know? <laughs> oh, you climb, oh, you can always climb up on a table and pound the, you the shoe. You know, Khrushchev, remember that? Oh, the problem with Mal, everybody was, getting married in one was, day. Huh? Remember they're, Mel? He was up on a table. Through, oh, yeah, by the next right. day. Yeah, he was it's pounding over. away at it, whatever. <laughs> Alderman Mel? Yeah. Yeah, idiot. Uh, what, I mean, shh. Well, I'm sorry. He's an alderman. That's what you want here, man. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, do young I kids still believe in the Santa Claus tradition like we did? Oh, small well, ones. Well, it's a yeah, question they of do to some old. degree, but yeah. it gets spoiled relatively quickly. I, but know, the, the kids learn fast, yeah. though. Anyway, well, too much to the media bombardment. I was yeah. just yeah. going to yeah. say that. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You you mean there isn't a Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, right. and yeah, there is a Santa Claus. Let's wait. Claus. Let's wait just one minute here. <laughs> he get, the Santa Claus gave me a, 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 a cell phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I remember. Yeah, give me some time to digest that. Well, there's a very good remark. Uh, when did any of you think that that lovely part of our life was over? I mean, it, it I was wasn't. Am I supposed to think back that far? <laughs> my, uh, well, I could tell you a story of myself. This my, is why my I'm folks, saying it. I was six years old. My folks thought I was smart already, and I wasn't. They kept me up. All of a sudden, they're putting stuff under the tree, and I says, there, there's more presents in the morning, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wise to it yet. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I, learned, I learned when I was about eight years old already. Uh-huh. I would think it would be about that age. Yeah. You know, it should it be. could be a gradual <laughs> thing, it should too. Be. No, we talk about Santa Claus and how so much of the Christmas stuff is rushed now by commercialism and all. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we were about eight or nine years old, if you remember, maybe not, I don't know if we were even ten yet, which would have been around 1955 or somewhere, Kresge's had their Kresge's Santa Claus party on NBC starting in like September. Yeah, <laughs> I, have I, two, that, I had no. three no. younger brothers and sisters, so if I was eight or nine, how old were they? I kept saying, when's Santa Claus, Ma? And it's still warm outside. They're still playing baseball. And, no, oh. they only did that one year. No. Yeah. He'd come out, he'd read a letter, but they, of course they'd show some products that were available and well, well, that time? I'm going to tell you on myself. We, we, fortunately, for convenience, Santa Claus lived right next door to us. Excellent. So how lucky were we? Well, you're in Minnesota. It's real close. Well, to the point oh, I'm bringing uh, out is we Pole. had a ritual on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. That bell would start ringing, and first mm -hmm. your house, and oh, my God, you know, not your house, and bag everywhere, you know, and. Uh, and finally, it's our house. Well, with us, you know, we had to act and do everything. I played the accordion. 
So I had three songs I had to play. And my brother had to virtually take out his little bank, open it up, you know, it probably had 25 pennies in it, and give Santa at least 10 of them, you know. And he used to have a long face, you know. It was a <laughs> terrible <laughs> heartache for him, you know. And I didn't care about this playing. Well, anyway, and then if we knew our little prayer, am I going too long? If we knew our little prayer, would you like to uh, continue this? Go ahead. Okay. Well, if uh, we had a little prayer, we knew, so we said the prayer. And, of course, Santa just thought we were the most wonderful children in the world, you know. And I absorbed that as almost um, secretly having a private relationship in, in, the, in the nicest way with Santa. You know, I, you fall in love with mm -hmm. this character. And I kept that feeling till I was about 11 or 12 years old. Oh, and we're walking to school one day, and I don't want to say too much, but one of my girlfriends had an older sister who was walking with us. She was 15, you know, and we were kids. And she started te uh, teasing me about, what, you still mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. believe in things like that, you know? And I said, yeah, I did, because I did. No. Not no. for the toys, not for the letter you wrote, but for that person, you know. And she literally ruined my life. I mean, in my heart, I, I went home and I started talking about it. So mm -hmm. I kind of think I was a kid who could honestly yeah. say I went a long time. And the challenge of how your parents deal with it. Oh, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. I was in respect to it all. Well, when we come back, I'll tell you about my son. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have to go, aren't we, right now? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we do. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians, and we thank you for it. We'll be right back. for a real good place to have lunch or dinner while well, I have just the right place for you to go and that is Sorrento's Village Restaurant and Pizzeria located at 2318 North Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. Now every Friday from 5 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. you can enjoy their all-you-can-eat buffet and pasta bar for just $11.95 for adults and $7.95 for kids 10 and under. Sorrento's is proud to introduce its Friday night buffet with pasta bar made to order, fresh pasta with your choice of vodka, four cheese avedo, or marinated sauce, plus Sorrento's meatballs and sausage, and a buffet that is bursting with flavors from Rosanti's seafood, chicken dishes, and a variety of Sorrento's pizzas a full salad bar, and garlic bread. Again, just eleven ninety five for adults and seven ninety five for kids 10 and under. All you can eat. You can also enjoy their affordable, fast, perfect, full-service catering. Catering that might sound expensive, but when you choose Sorrento's, we do the work, and you take the applause for a memorable party, shower, barbecue, or block party, or... Christmas party or whatever, or use one of our beautiful banquet facilities, accommodating 20 to 200 guests and plenty of free parking. Many catering orders can be even prepared the same day or within 24 hours. You can also enjoy their daily lunch buffet, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Menus change daily. Now on Tuesdays, half price lunch buffet. Purchase a regular price soft drink and enjoy the buffet at half off. Remember,
for the best food in town, go to Sorrento's Vill uh, Village Restaurant and Pizzeria, located at 2318 Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. They are just a few hundred feet south of Fullerton Avenue on the west side of the street. Plenty of free, free parking. You can call Frank or Sam at area code 847-455-9440. Once again, Sorrento's Village Pizzeria and Restaurant, located at 2318 North Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. And you can call Frank or Sam at 847-455-9440. And now back to our announcer. Thank you, John. Now back to our show. Back to me now, huh? Uh -oh. <laughs> Can I say something just before we get going? We were just talking oh. about Santa Claus and the uh, belief in Santa Claus and the old famous saying about, you know, this, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. That goes back to about 1893 or 97, somewhere in the era. In a New York newspaper, on the editorial page, the girl wrote them that she said that, a friend of hers said there was no Santa Claus, but you said there was, and anonymously this one editorialist he wrote that all about we don't know what he was re the way he said it was yes there is because you know all the virtues and the, the spirit you know, but, but yeah. they, she could write it to a kid with a double meaning where they would know you know but that was the uh i guess that was the uh, lead lead part of it was yes virginia there is a santa claus so that's where that comes from i thought that was more much more recent i did research no, it a little bit as you can see it's so well known that yeah, now, it's repeated yeah. every year oh and sure that, yeah. that's why i think it's supposed to be the most printed editorial mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. oh, but anyway, to go back to my son, we used to have a lot of fun with him because experiencing my childhood, you know, I, I remember how I discovered toys and everything else that were around the house. And so I made a special effort to hide them. And we had a couple of friends. Neighbor next door came over one time in a Santa Claus outfit, so we gave him the toys and came in. And my wife had a doctor friend who went from house to house, so he put the toys between the doors, and he came in and stuff like that. And we used to be able to hide him so when we left the house one of us would be a couple minutes later we just pour all the toys out and then mm -hmm. come home here's all the toys mm -hmm. you know and uh he was he was always marveled how i could do that mm -hmm. because he could never catch on to the fact that the toys were there <laughs> this type of thing so it was always a lot of fun yeah the, that that's that's the part i think when i just said yeah. they should know their tradition but they don't know how much fun they're missing that yeah. inner feeling that never right. leaves you or that uh, nothing nothing well wrong. it's a gimme society yeah oh. it's a gimme well, uh, uh, pro probably good and they, they you just can't get it out of them no. either you know and when uh, your first toy is a 300 hundred dollar ipod and a yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 you know and every pod, kid yeah. needs one yeah. <laughs> and well, they yeah. got so much stuff it's now so you gotta line. almost ask them well, what do you want? What don't no. you have? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. you probably yeah. want? Yeah. Well, yeah. Plus, yeah. In, an, another thing, I think, I'm not sure, but I think statistically was last year or this year that this was the first year that the traditional family in this country was in the minority. I mean, mother, father, yeah. children. Yeah. It's a single mothers, okay. single yeah. father. Uh -huh. You know, I have two mommies, I yeah. have two daddies. Mm -hmm. You know, or no. That, that could you be know, possible, yeah. Well, that, that's, uh, that relates to, of course, they always say that the traditional family cut down on crime problems. And now you got more and more single mothers, a lot of them living in poverty. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the father, they don't even know who he is. Never. Mm -hmm. you know, and then, the and then they pick the up an idiot boyfriend. <laughs> the light was off in the room. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Bring well, back the good old days. Well, you can take no. a look, at, look at Maury Povich with his uh, "Who's Your Daddy" type of thing. You know, mm, that's I, that I, I don't watch it, but every so often I catch a glimpse, and he's, "Well, this is the sixth guy that mm -hmm. straight in front of you know." I, just, I watch I it all the time. Yeah. Oh, do you? I watch it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> because I'm just so glad that I'm who I am. Yeah. When I see how other people it, are too. It? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, to that's a good, that's I had a little point. Irish guy that used to drive me, and I, I'd say, you know, Larry, what are you doing watching that crap? I feel so good, Cap. He says, yeah. I feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> he has a point, though, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 Oh, I saw, yeah I it is, it is sad, isn't it? I can't figure out how, why these people are so 
dumb to come up there on a TV set. And you know, NBC. What do you mean dumb? Well, well, they're, they're free paid. trip. Free and trip of money. Yeah. Yeah. I know they're paid, yeah. but still. So I, and and they're on TV. Like uh, Judge Judy much. and all that. Yeah. You know, yeah. what do you yeah. want to tell? What they all are yeah. paid. That's what they yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah. no, like. Or Judge Marilyn. Yeah, what? Well, Judge yeah. Judy and all these here, they're supposed to sign a release that said they will not uh, fight the judgment of the Judge Judy or whoever the judge is on there. But they found out that a couple of times they went back to court and they that uh, judgment didn't hold and they reversed the judgment. So yeah. that, that well, was all. Sure. You know, yeah. But uh, yeah, I still, you know, personally, I, I think I got enough pride in myself that I can't see going up there making yeah. a complete idiot out of myself. Yeah. And, and with the shows like that and with the Springer or whatever, yeah. you mean to tell me that they're not told to come up be real combative to begin with? Oh, well, they must be. Yeah. You yeah. see yeah. a fight yeah. on every... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Springer's yeah. different. You know, Springer's, to me, is comedy. You know, stupidity, maybe, but comedy. <laughs> but the, these, you know, sad cases or uh, uh, these girls come up there and they're trying to find their father or their kids and they're going through a, a litany of boys. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. I bet you they have good Christmases. Oh, yeah, right. well, after that, you know, they get paid. But <laughs> and the fight scenes and all. Oh, well, my yeah. Lord. Well, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, I said a R-rated movie of uh, Springer's show and that's it's even dumber. <laughs> <laughs> He was the mayor of Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. Time. yeah. 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 No, yeah. The only, the only, when, every time I see Jerry Springer, I can't get over the fact, that, and this is true, that he paid a hooker with a check. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's I right. think that's it got him in a little bit of trouble. Exactly. But I, and he's never man, lived it down either. This, down. this man actually and he asked for change. Actually <laughs> paid a hooker with a check. <laughs> so if you put I, mean, that way. Yeah. <laughs> I said so. So much for oh, Jer yeah. so much oh my for my God. opinion of Jerry. Yeah. Oh, the hooker's got to be dumber than he is. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been a credit card. Well, that <laughs> Maury Povich, he's uh, Connie Chung's husband. Yeah, right. You know, I don't see her anymore. I guess so. Yeah, she's still around. I think. I don't, you know, she was quite a news anchor. Yeah, one time. Yeah. Remember every time she, uh, she tricked who was its mother into saying that uh, Hillary was a bit or something. Yeah. She was acting like the microphone was down. Oh, was and it? she was caught. Oh, Hillary. Is that was that what it ended her career? Or? No. Well, it seemed like it put her on. The yeah, there something. was something yeah, that right. it. Yeah. She didn't leave. Something was, ended her career. One. Yeah, but she used to belong to young Republicans over in uh, Park Ridge. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hillary. Well, that, yeah, Hillary. Hillary. That's Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. Hil yeah. Hillary was a Nixon girl, I believe. Yeah, I think. It was. Yeah, back in 1960. Must look more like her mother then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know her mother. I think she liked Goldwater for a while. I yeah. think she. Uh, well, Goldwater, for Goldwater. He got maligned a lot more than you know. <laughs> anyway, he told the truth, and people didn't like it. Oh well, yeah. You brought that up years ago. Remember that? What's if, that? If Goldwater was elected, we'd have all these problems. Remember? Mm. Oh, yeah. war, war, war would be uh, uh, escalated, and yeah. there'd be un oh, racial yeah. unrest, and et cetera, down the line. If he got elected, well, he didn't get elected. Yeah, <laughs> you did. He didn't, and we got we had him anyway. Well, uh, yeah, then afraid. we had the Great yeah. Society instead. Mm -hmm. oh, well, you yeah. know, ta talking about Hillary, politicians, you know, one of, I mean, they have so many classic lines about what make, really makes them politicians. You know, it's you know people they you know when a, a classic line about people is yeah politicians they're all let's just say hookers. And and I say that don't ever say that around me because <laughs> calling a politician a hooker is an insult to every hooker that I've ever met. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> seriously, at least a hooker, you, she gets paid, she does what, or now he, job, or, huh? or he does whatever, whichever <laughs> oh, the case may be. But my cl my favorite line about Hillary, and only only a politician could get away with this, when she was running for Senate in New York, now she's from Illinois, Park Ridge. She always said all her life, even when she was in the White House as the first lady, that she was a Cub fan. Mm -hmm. So she was running for, this is true, she yeah. was running for a senator in New York, and someone asked her, well, you always said you were a Cub fan, but you're wearing a Yankees hat now because she was running for senator in New York. Uh, what about it? And she said, well, yes, I Always was a lifelong Cub fan, but secretly, I was a Yankee fan. She actually said that. I think you're right. I said no. Only a politician, secretly. So when she, so after she went to a Cub game, she went back home to her bedroom 
and admired all the Yankee posters and memorabilia that she had <laughs> hidden away in her bedroom secretly. Uh -huh. Give me a break. <laughs> Somebody said that she claimed God. to have been uh, part Jewish and born on the pitcher's mound in Yankee Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she can't. Um, they, they, there was, and, and this is nothing, you know, obscene or, or, or anything, but there, you know, the the uh, Viagra ad of if you if it happens for four hours or more, you have to go to a emergency room or call a doctor. Well, now it's coming out that no. Very simple. You just look at a picture of Hillary. That's all. <laughs> well, she can't. She can't be running for president. She keeps on denying it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that means true. she's in. Right. Yeah. More, more than I, right up to the end, huh? Yeah. Well. And, and we we need more people with concussions running our country. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't want to. Uh, it's it's getting to the eleventh hour here. Yes. I'd like to bring something up. Uh, Please. I've been approached by the author uh, uh, and the director of a play that is coming to Chicago. Uh, it will be at the uh, Prop Theater, 3510 North Elston Avenue. The name of this play is When Angels Wept. And uh, the author was in third grade at Resurrection uh, uh, Grammar School. Uh, during the Our Lady of the Angels fire. Uh, very good guy. He came over to the uh, museum. We showed him a lot of stuff that we had there that we we uh, probably will put on display out in the auditorium. But this is going to start in uh, March, so there's plenty oh. of time. Uh, if you go to the uh, olafire.com uh, website, uh, you'll see a big advertisement on it, and uh, that, by the way, that that website tells you the whole story. Um, he he contacted me. I contacted some of the survivors uh, that I'm uh, that I know, and that uh, uh, some of the clergy. And uh, you know, I was kind of hesitant on this. Um, this guy Charlie uh, uh, is is well known in this type of uh, genre, and and uh, uh, you know he seems to be very very sincere in saying that he uh, does not want to embarrass anybody. He doesn't want to bring up old feelings and that. I told him that that's BS right there. You are going to you know have have feelings. Uh, he's changed the name of the school to uh, something other than Our Lady of the Angels. Uh, is that the idea of the play? Uh, the whatever? idea of the play is to keep it in everybody's mind. Don't forget this. Mm -hmm. uh, this fire changed. It was worldwide, not nationwide. It was worldwide uh, advertisement to change fire prevention codes and, and uh, you know, uh, put the put the uh, fear of God in these, in these builders mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Well, it's also uh, the drill, fire drills that had to be... Uh, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. the the uh, uh, fire prevention codes. That wasn't in the code before. Well, I know we, uh, uh, everything that they had, uh, uh, inspections that they had were up to code. A uh, good friend of mine, Henry Anselmo, was the inspector there, and uh, that was the the whole thing, is that everything was up to code. Mm -hmm. This fire then changed that code and and really strengthened it mm -hmm. and uh, made the enforcement much, much greater than it was before. I know that uh, when my when the, uh, Jen graduated, I went to see, well, our, our grade school, St. Theodore, Tom and myself, they had Holy Cross nuns there. That's the Notre Dame's order down there, you know. Mm -hmm. So when she graduated, I went over to the retirement house and I actually saw Sister James Francis, our old principal, and seventh grade teacher and uh, she said well you know Ryan prior to that we didn't have a, even have a telephone in the school that's right you had to go over to the convent or the rectory mm -hmm. to make a phone call so after that phone went right in yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. remember they put the uh, sprinkler system the, in shortly thereafter right. too and, uh, it was funny that that this guy was in in third grade it was at resurrection yeah and and the pastor of resurrection 
was Father Bill, Monsignor Gorman, our chaplain. Mm -hmm. And and uh, while, while I was showing him all this stuff we had, I said, well, come here. <laughs> I says, here's Father Bill's helmet and, mm -hmm. and pictures of him and that. And, and uh, I think this guy is very sincere. You know, he's not going to make everybody happy about this, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's to get it, get mm -hmm. the point across. Mm -hmm. That they got to keep it up. The address and then the theater it's, again. It's olafire.com and the uh, well, that's the yeah the, the, the website. Uh, website. Uh, it's the Prop Theater, P R O P, and it's 3510 North Elston Avenue. Elston, yes. It starts in March. Uh, in yeah, in March, uh, there'll be a couple of uh, of. Uh, you know, rehearsals. I don't know if they're dress rehearsals or what they're going to be the paper, in too, February. Huh? We're trying to get it out. We're trying to get it out as much as we can. Uh, I met with one of our our old people that was on our panel on Cop Talk, uh, Pat Butler, this morning. He's going to put something out. Um, uh, Matt Plavonich, uh, uh you know, I don't know what his thought of it is. Now, who's the writer? Who's the, the guy's name is, is Garippo. Garippo. Charles Garippo. <coughs> now, has he uh, already had things produced, or? Oh yes, he's a uh, worldwide, okay. worldwide check. Yeah, this is nothing, nothing new for him, you know. And the guy is very sincere. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted help, uh, uh, but you talked about uh, Dick Scheid coming down the ladder and and that, and, mm -hmm. and we'll probably give him. We have a huge picture of Dick uh, doing mm -hmm. that. And, John? We have a model. You know, John? It, 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 it interests me, Bill, uh, when you said that uh, uh, that the chief was there and he inspected the school and the school passed the uh, uh, fire inspection and all that. Right. But, you know, just like Our Lady of the Angels fire and just like what happened in Con uh, Connecticut over the weekend, why do we have to wait for a disaster like this to happen in order to change codes and, mm -hmm. John, and to do that? That seems to be... Just the way things are, we wait until there's a catastrophe, I mean, and then we change things. You know, his answer is human nature. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just Money like Money. Kentucky is, I mean, Connecticut is not the first time that there was a situation at a school. But why do oh, we have no. to wait? Uh, I mean, over here at Ridgewood, when I go to Ridgewood, I have to wear a, a pass, and the doors are locked. And and uh, and I have to announce myself before I can get into the school. But that wasn't forever, John. That yeah. probably just happened not too long ago. Maybe yeah. since nine eleven. Yeah. Well, the trouble. You know, was I know Hersey High School, where my kids go, where my grandkids go. You know, you have to. In fact, you have to drop you your yeah. your driver's license off, mm -hmm. and then go in. And when you come out, then the guy gives it back yeah. to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's just a shame that you have to wait for a tragedy. Uh, to happen before. It's always the way it's been. You and know, before. in the last year, that town was just given the honor of being the most perfect um, ideal town, town, ideal town yeah. to live in in the whole United States. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that an ironic yeah. Well, the thing was, it was locked. The school was locked down. Yes, yeah. he, he broke a window. window. Yeah, he, he broke, broke a window. 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 Which yeah. I was surprised was right not there. taped for an alarm. Yeah. Well, I, I know that well, I, have a window. Window. Yeah. I was in the youth division at, toward the end there and in the school unit and it was a policy that I know of already existing in 1990 of all these doors are supposed to be locked and they had all these different personnel and their security you know looking about for any you know coming in so I do know in the, in the Chicago board of it anyway I know that was the case well this is this play uh, seems to be very he said it's a two hour play oh, I'm sure it's good with a ten play. minute intermission and and the guy he says and i don't think we should even have an intermission because it breaks things up and uh, you know yeah. but that's well. it i'm going to uh he's going to notify me and they will have a like a like a, a walk through i guess or a read through of the mm -hmm. script with all the actors and he wants to know what our feelings are for that you know mm -hmm. and, and he said you know we'll see what it is he did tell me what the you know what it was it's it's about one family or you know some such That'd thing he changed all the names but he hasn't changed like happened. wrigley field or yeah. or yeah it's you know chicago names of big story. the big chicago mm -hmm. thing but he changed everything else yeah so uh i just wanted to bring that up so that uh people uh listening would know about this and that it's mm -hmm. coming up and that see it's it, it's about an 80 to 100 seat 
theater. Small theater. Yeah, yeah. small. Small theater. Oh, it's right near a firehouse. So mm -hmm. is the idea Chief is O'Neill's restaurant. What, uh, right, yeah. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> is this the idea is to know, uh, maybe <laughs> kick this off here and go to bigger things later? Or? I don't think so. He said he would like to see it go somewhere else uh, mm -hmm. yeah. if, mm -hmm. if it, you know, the interest is there and if it goes over good here. Yeah. Uh, he's only got this theater for, I think he said for two months. Mm -hmm. Um and, and he would have liked to have got the bigger one, but he's funding this whole thing him, uh, on his on his own. Yeah. Is that uh, the theater where the producer? Uh, he just started uh, getting it to be a vital place to go to. For I have something. no idea. He I had something like a. I think a play his I honor was there a few years well, ago. No, I mean, yeah, his I honor was there. Yeah, there were a lot of so, uh, like storefront theaters out yeah. there. Oh, there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's one over by, on Western near yeah. the uh, overpass there. They mm -hmm. call it under 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 the overpass or something like that yeah. uh, theater. By the blue, the blue thing. That's where all the coppers from 19 all. Uh, yeah, and then there's uh, one on. They all studied their and, theater uh, there. Yeah, there's Montrose, some. Not Montrose, I, Lawrence. I read uh, I read an article. I think this was last year that said that the theater community in the city of Chicago is more vibrant than the New York yes. City. Right. Uh, right. right now, and, and the reason for it, like you, what you brought up is all these smaller yeah. theaters and workshop yeah. theaters. Yeah. And yeah. Well, the other thing is yeah. now they're testing, they're testing the plays here in Chicago before they take it to New York. Mm -hmm. Because New York, if the critics don't like it, it's a death penalty. Right. That's, that's oh. it. You're, You're here, here in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. That was the point I was chance. making there. It's a yeah. test. Yeah, it's uh -huh. a test, but yeah. the critics... Word isn't final because they they panned the Hobbit and it was the biggest draw of the last week. Yeah. You know, so it, the critics in Chicago don't mean a hell of a lot. Where in New York, it's uh, life and death. Seems to be right. right. They they are the best. All you have to do is ask them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'll be more than happy to tell you how yeah. right they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of side street uh, yeah. theater and and it's good stuff. A ton of them, right? And right. the price is right. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. another thing. I, you, you know, he's got, uh, I, if you go to the website, the OLA uh, mm -hmm. uh, fire dot com, mm -hmm. uh, he's got the, the whole mm -hmm. thing there, and the tickets are like, I think they were 20 or 25 yeah. bucks. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, know. you know, like the yeah. George Theater and all those down yeah. in the halls. Yeah. Yeah. Seen, oh, yeah. Good, they're good. Seen any way to play Chicago Cops or anything? <laughs> uh, no, no, but I'll get, get uh, parts, I, I'll uh, get Mr. Sam Cazzo. Who? Sam Cazzo. Who's that? You know Sammy? Oh, he's. Oh, just, does, he know Ryan? Huh? <laughs> does he know Ryan? Does he know Ryan? You can play Chicago Cop, just dye your hair a little Don bit. Harrigan. Harrigan. Don Harrigan. Yeah, we should Don do played in, Don's in the film industry. Don you know. played in our uh, uh, backdraft. Oh, yeah. Are he, he played a couple of times. Oh, he's played in a lot of them. He was the, back, the backpipe man. Were you? Were you yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, Maybe that's why I saw you. Did you know his son? Yeah. He was. They play bagpipes. He was your worst for Ron Howard? Public enemy. What's my uh, motivation? I used right? to jab a little bit in the, in the uh, okay. gym there because of the fact that there's so many mistakes. <laughs> well, folks, gang, we, well, that well. brings us just about to the end here. And uh, we'll wonderful. be doing another show on, what, the 21st of January we'll be taping mm. it. So anybody who would like tickets, you'll have to see our box <laughs> office. But I, I warn you, they're harder to get than Bozo tickets were. <laughs> so just let us know and call the lines. <laughs> Until then, here you go. I'll throw it to Rich. Goodbye. <coughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, Rich. Merry Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. We wish to thank Kevin of Jack, J A C K F M, W R H S 89.7 FM, and Smooth FM, W R W X 88.1, for broadcasting our shows over the Ridgewood Radio Network. Recordings of previous Meet the Chicago Historians program are available for your listening via the Internet at www.windycityhometown.com. On behalf of everyone associated with our Historians program, we wish you a very Merry Christmas, season's greetings, and a Happy New Year to you and yours. This is your announcer, Rich Lang. So long. Until next time. You have been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, December the 17th, the year 2012. 
This broadcast was produced and directed by John Nevada and was pre-recorded. Thanks for listening, and once again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone.